Okay, cool. I just have to give a thumbs up, guys. If you saw that, you saw the first blooper of our Euro show. Welcome from Touchline Thoughts to our 2020 Euro show. Uh, I'm joined, as usual, by the ever-wonderful Paige Culver. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Uh, we'll f- let you finish chewing there because I know yeah. you enjoy your, your supper over because it's like eight o'clock, nine yeah. o'clock your time, right? Um, and the man that always joins us, helps us produce this show, puts things together. Look at that wonderful background. If you can see it, colors are fantastic. Uh, Nick McVicker, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. Excited for this one. I got the colors. Yeah. I got the pride. I'm rocking the England kit, which I don't do very often. So this is big, um, but I'm excited. Yeah. Well, we're really happy to have you join us. As usual, I think this is our, our team of live coverage. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, but we finally made it to the finals. You know, a month ago, we we're like antsy waiting for something to start. And now we're finally at the final. Um, two teams that I don't think any of us predicted to be here. I mean, the question came up. Does England get a chance in the final? Does Italy get a chance in the final? Are they good enough to be in the final? But these weren't the two teams, I think majority favorite to be here right nick um england had england had more backing at the beginning of the tournament i think than italy a lot of people were seeing italy as a a more transition team right now a lot of older guys with a lot of young guys trying to find where they were i don't think everyone expected them to be as good as they were in this tournament and that's a credit to them they've been fantastic england on the other hand had the big names up front they had the i mean the defense partner of Maguire and stones was supposed to be one of the best center back pairs in the tournament Mm -hmm. just the pair i'm not saying overall defense and yet the defense has been one of the best if not the best in the tournament only giving up two goals the entire way so these two teams one goal sorry yes one yeah one goal the entire way so you're looking at two teams that may be overachieved in comparison to what people thought at the beginning of the tournament but england definitely was one that people saw going to the semis possibly even the final at the beginning now whether they bring it home that's a whole nother issue (laughs) Um, what do you make of this bring it home sort of nonsense in my opinion, but Paige, what do you make of it? It's, it's never been home as Casper Schmeichel alluded to last round. I love round. <laughs> that. I love that interview, but, um, if you watched it, that was a great interview, but I, I mean, I agree with him. It has never been home. And I think England's getting a little bit of criticism right now because they've had what six. They're going to have six games? of the seven games. Yeah. That's wild. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's too early to say it's coming home. I think they're a little <laughs> bit, um, hopefully they're not shooting themselves in the foot, but we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm excited for the game. Honestly, yeah. like the big coming home thing was always about the world cup. And because they haven't won it in so long, they've now just adopted it for the Euro cup and just said, right. It's not I even guess a we're Euro going thing. with that. <laughs> um, yeah. Makes about the same amount of sense but we've before we get more into england i know we have a guest in the wings who is a massive italy fan um we all know her from our our spot kick our first interview series she is the coach we call her the coach um maria how you doing welcome to the show good thanks for having me i'm so excited that you guys are uh, are doing this live and uh no it's it's great to be here and uh yeah i've, I've enjoyed listening to you uh all speak about the the euros and just so excited for as well obviously being a massive italy fan but just also so excited for this tournament to be back and you're starting to see COVID come on the tail end of things and just be be around fans and you know watching international competition so obviously have a favorite for today but just <laughs> in, i've enjoyed this this tournament so much really there's a favorite i can't tell yeah I can't tell. You, you can't tell with all the flags and everything here no you can't tell um well we did promise you that if italy makes the finals and i think we we spoke it into existence, right, Paige? We did. We manifested yeah. it. Was it. Um, it was because of you. It was because of both of you. Um, but, I mean, what a tournament for Italy. What do you make of their the road to the final so far? Have you been impressed by them? Some things they need to work on. What are your thoughts? Yeah, first off, obviously missing the the World Cup was was massive to us, being the lowest ranking in, 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 in all of history for, for Italy was definitely tough, missing that tournament. So as much as I would love to see them win, I think I'll be, obviously some tears might be shed, but uh, if, they, if they do uh, lose today, but I think overall coming back to the finals and seeing them win on PKs, which I grew up in in the 90s, watching them not as successful on PKs, but having these, these moments have been great. Um, also, um, Mancini taking over and now playing a different style, right? Italians are known for defense 
defending, um, counterattacking. Now you're seeing them uh, attack. And and Mancini said when he took over this program, you're going to see a team come for the Euros and want to attack, uh, want to get forward. And and that's what they've done. I mean, um, you know, not conceding many goals in this tournament, but it's just nice to see something different from Italy and not just mm-hmm. defend. Of course, defending is great, but having this attacking team and this style is 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 creating new fans that maybe didn't think of it Italy um, as an attacking team and maybe there'll be some big names like a Ronaldo um, mm-hmm. for, for Italy after this tournament. Um, I know there's some some big attacking players now that people are talking about on, on their squad. So been, been so excited as a fan watching it um, and just being just being a part of this this tournament. Yeah. I mean, I think the question Paige and I also had during the review process of the tournament was... Um, there's no real like defensive unit that you look at this team like are, like I kept comparing it back to their 06 championship um but this this the style is different the attack is different right like it's it's completely different than what you would assume like the identity has changed is this what we're going to continue to see with Italian soccer or is it going to go reverting back to a defensive style I think this will this will change, especially now with um, I also if you look at City I, I mean they've scored the most goals in this tournament so far. So you're starting to see the City I even change and most people obviously the EPL for me is one of the best leagues in the world, but you're now seeing City A stars from all across, not just for Italy, but for other teams now scoring and, and, and changing. So I think the game's becoming more attacking, which is, which is great. I think Italy's adapting to that. Um, and I hope it continues because again, I would love a Ronaldo kind of star in that attacking role, because I know people look at Donnarumma or Chiellini or Benucci as the Italian stars of the, of the, of the team and and idolize them. I mean, when I traveled to Italy, everybody's name was John Luigi because of Buffon. And and I hope we create that in in the attack. And I think with young players like Chiesa, Insigne, Mobile, I think we'll we'll start to create those those attacking players and those kind of household names like a Ronaldo. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, who would you say are like the key players for this game? Like who who need does England need to like majorly watch out for? Yeah, losing Spinozola was was huge. So I think Emerson having a great performance um, will be will be big um, at the back, trying to cover Ster- Sterling and Kane up top. Chiellini and Bonucci will definitely be be under pressure there. So like I'm looking for like key matchups. I think um, for us uh, on the attack, um, so big for for key players to have big moments. But I'm I mean it's kind of been like a, a Kane Sterling have been. Um, kind of those predominant players for England and and Italy. I feel it's a little bit more spread out on on who they played. I think Immobile has to have a big game. I know he's been hit or miss this tournament. Um, Insigne is always attacking, always shooting, not always a goal. So I think a big performance with him, but definitely by Immobile um, in the attack. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, they've had good tournaments so far as well. Yeah, no, it's it's great. You talked about. Buffon, now you have another amazing keeper in Donnarumma on the Italian squad. How important is it, or has it been for the Italian national team to have that consistency for so long with two of possibly Buffon being one of the greatest, if not the greatest keeper of all time, in my opinion, and Donnarumma showing the skill? How how incredible has that been to as a fan to watch? Yeah, I mean, not conceding more than a goal. Um, I think since he's been with the with the national team is like a stat that is is incredible and i think because he's so young i mean I, I know he started with the national and started to be like the talk around 17 so now to be 22 23 years old and still be this incredible player it's nice to see kind of his his journey i know now he's leaving ac and and, and going and i know now with psg he said he'd be the backup there with 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 navis starting so i think he's understanding his role i think he's still so prime but it's so nice because I mean, to replace Gigi is is huge, um, but, you know, being in Italy so many times and, and getting to go to Juventus and getting to see how many players want to be keepers because of Gigi, now Donnarumma is going to do that for the next generation of players coming up. So I think that's key that we've, we have another legend and he's still so young and he's already making a name for himself. Um, and what a better mentor uh, to have than, than Buffon for, for Donnarumma. So it's great. And obviously I, I wish Gigi was here even as a bench player, but I know he knows his role now. Um, and I can't believe he's still playing first of all for, for <laughs> Gigi, but no, it's great to see and just where Donnarumma's career will, will go from here being so young. I got a, I got mm-hmm. one more question to ask. Yeah, go wise, and it's actually Jersey wise. 
What did you think of the whole issue with the uh, the jersey switch? Because originally they were going to go with the same ones that matched the uniforms for the players, and then they switched to the next year uniform for the keeper part way th- part way through the decision making. What was that? Did you think that was weird? Did you think that was odd in any way? <laughs> so Italians are so I haven't switched his jersey out um, for the whole tournament. So I think Italians are superstitious. So I think whatever he probably did well in or or whatever, maybe someone blessed the the kit for him for the new one and and said this is the new style of Italy. Then I think that's probably how they went. I mean, they're, Italians are the most superstitious people. We have people over right now watching the game, and we all haven't switched our jersey, jerseys out. So I think it comes down a little bit to that, that we're very, very much whatever is working. And if it's something new, then that's great. But I think that's kind of my answer as a fan um, for the team. Yeah, no, I just thought it was funny because only on the home kit does yeah. he wear next year's keeper jersey. But on the away kit, he wears this year's keeper jersey. I just thought it was funny. You don't yeah, mess with a yeah. good thing. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's probably the same. Same one. I mean, I know a lot of the players from from reading some articles have just stitched on, like taken off the stitch and, and put the new stitch of the of the kit. Not all of them. So who who knows if it's maybe the same kit they've started the tournament with? Yeah. Uh, who knows? I mean, I haven't switched my jersey out as, and I haven't even taken the tags off my new one yet. I'm that superstitious when it comes to it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you you talked about the heartbreak penalties in the '90s. Um, as a coach, I think all of us here are very curious about this. What do you tell a player um, when they're taking a kick? Because we've seen some very poor penalty shootouts this, this tournament. Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely not easy stepping up. I think players have to um, want to take it. I mean, I know in some of the games in, in the tournament, they've not had just the five kickers, the eighth, ninth player who maybe didn't want to take it is now stepping up. So as a coach, you just enjoy enjoy the moment. I mean, it's in your favor to decide this uh, the side, and and you obviously are kicking the ball, which is is obviously harder for the 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 goalie because they have to kind of read off your body language. So it's just a, all about the the mental game when it comes to it. Everybody knows how to finish from that close from from the field, but it's the the mental side. But I can't even imagine being a pro player and having all these fans, and it's not even a full stadium, all these fans chanting at you, either booing you or chanting for you to score, uh, depending on on who's up. So, yeah, it just comes down to the mental game and and creating confidence in our players is kind of what we try to do for PKs. Well, especially after, you know, they're coming off of a COVID season where they didn't have fans and now they're dealing with, you know, it's not full capacity, but still having those fans screaming at them. I'm sure that's, do you think that like impacts the game in general or these like penalties potentially? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know like with the booing and stuff that's happened, um, you know, for sure, for sure it's, it's came into play, but everybody remembers Bajo over the net um, in the 90s, uh, missing that. I mean, he's he's had such a great, great career, but obviously that was a moment where I remember as a kid when he missed that and my grandfather and my dad going outside of the, the car um, uh, and just pacing around the parking lot because they were so upset. So everybody remembers those, those bad misses and everybody remembers like a Pirlo chipping chipping Joe Hart um you know so there's different moments that you remember so and everybody now is probably going to remember Jorginho making that making that goal in the last game to to send us here and and get us into the final what do you make of players who do the little skip thing when they when they take a penalty we it's common in the game it's changing the direction of the play but like do you tell your players go ahead and be creative or do you tell them to take it through the laces or something? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would hope that they just want to be able to place the ball, but every player is, is different. We get some cheeky players in our program that want to just just chip chip the keeper or do one of those little pure low fancy moves or kind of like that stutter step. Um, again, they're watching Neymar's. They're watching all these players do that, and then they want to emulate those players. So, yeah, if it's if they want to, then for sure. Right. They just have to score. If they don't, then make them run a lap or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, running. Well, That's always the, the, if you make a mistake, go run. Right? Run, run away and never return. No. Okay. I'm not quoting the Lion King anymore. Um, but as we can see, the lineups are out. Players are ready to go. So coach, any final thoughts before we let you go? Um, no. No. Thank you. For, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. Thank you for hosting this and having me on here. I'm going to go scream the national anthem now. All right. Good luck. Uh, Bye, everybody. See you later, coach. 
what a pleasure having her back. Um, um, always a great character, always someone fun to talk to. But um, as she said, she's going to go watch the the national anthem, uh, Froza Itali. Um, and we'll... She's going to be screaming the top of her lungs. That's what she's going to be doing. Yeah. I'm trying to turn so, the game on now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Nick, I know you you love to take penalties. What do you make of what, what Coach said about um, the mindset going into um, going into a shot? Nailed it. 100% right. Like it yeah. is, it is such a mindset thing where you have to focus and try to be just in the moment. You can't be worried about everything else that's going on from personal experience. I blew a kick when I was a kid. It was the first kick I ever took because I thought the keeper was going to die. So I tried to put it up the middle and I knew, I don't know what I was thinking because this was a keeper who had no business moving ever, but I decided to go for it and it bit me. After that, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put it where no keeper will ever think. And then I didn't think about it ever again. And you can ask Paige's brother. We t- we had six or seven shootouts as a team over yeah. like yeah. three years. We we ended up in shootouts all the time. We missed one shot as a team in six or seven shootouts. It was honestly wow. incredible and an incredible run. But we just stopped caring. We stopped worrying about it. We're like, you know what? If I miss this kick... We knew that we had a good enough keeper and we had a good enough team to follow it up so that we would be okay. And I think that's what saved us a lot because we didn't worry as much about, okay, I need to make this or else we're screwed. It was more, if I miss this, I know my teammates have my back. Right. So that was a huge thing for us. It's it's a huge mental game. And right. I'm not happy 100%. about people doing this stupid little skip, jump, pop. Oh, I hate it. I don't too. think it actually does anything. Or when Pogba does like a million steps before he... Yes, it takes him takes longer to take a like, pedally kick than it takes Giannis to take a free throw. But <laughs> <laughs> No, it's awful. And I think it's a little too much. If you're going to take the kick and you want to be fancy with it, be fancy with the kick, not the run-up. What's the point yeah. of being fancy on the run-up? It doesn't make sense to me. But that's just yeah. me, so I can't say anything. Well, and my, sure. dad, my dad always said like... If you hit the the penalty in the right spot, hard and low in the corners, and if the goalie happens to make a great save, they made a great save, but you still hit the ball well. And now we're seeing these players trying to do all these fancy kicks and the goalkeepers are making saves and they look ridiculous. Like yeah. Yeah. if you try and chip the goalie and the goalie just catches it or something. Oh, it's it's ugly. It is so ugly. But if you try to to hit the ball hard in the right spot and the goalie made a great save, like kudos to that goalie. They exactly. deserve to save yeah. that. Exactly. But, yeah. I just... I never understood trying to, like, if you're placing it down the middle with power, you're placing it down the middle with power because you think the goalie's going to die. If you're placing it to the side, you're placing it down the side, assuming that the goalie's not going to go there. Like, I get those kicks. Those kicks make sense in my head. It's yeah. when it comes to people trying to do all the chip shots because they think they're going to catch the goalie off. Well, if you don't hit a chip shot hard enough, the goalie can dive, get up, and dive back and make the save. That's the biggest thing for me. I just don't get it. I think it's too much, but that's that's the way I take kicks. I can't say yeah. that I that it's the wrong way to take kicks. It's just a personal thing for me. I never understood it. Yeah. Well, speaking of penalties, what do you guys make of the um, penalty that got England into the penalty. final? It's a soft penalty. I'm not saying it was a vicious tackle by any chance, but I actually think he was fouled a couple times leading up to the last challenge in the box. So it was a penalty regardless in my head. Phone. soft no no i mean we, we talked about enough. it we talked about it yesterday i think the the foul on kane earlier in the game was a penalty like a, a clear cut penalty but this one i i think you know we kind of balanced the game out but it was a foul he was hit a few times he was knocked just dropped easy because it's your momentum takes you down it's also what do you make of that the game right and it's sterling but <laughs> sterling. it's also anyway, the moment uh, of the game though like he he knew yep. he knew what he was doing. This isn't like a, this isn't him trying to figure it out. No, he knew exactly what he was doing in that moment. So yeah. that's where we're at. Here we are. Uh, game's about to start. The ball kind of gets the little car that brings it I to love the, that. the. What is that, by the way? I didn't notice that earlier in the tournament. That's new, right? For the no, for the no, it's all tournament. They they bring yeah. it out. Nobody touches. You know how the ref used to come out with the ball and yeah. like, place it or whatever. No, they just bring it on the car, and the cars had the the pride pride logo on the side a few times and it's it's pretty cool i mean you're still touching the ball no matter what you do but i guess it's just one less contact i don't know i think it's cute the little car well, coming out it's nice yeah yeah it's a little something um, different why don't we jump into lineups um 
as the ball is about to start, uh, the game is about to start, I should say. Italy going with their traditional 4-3-3 this entire tournament. It's worked for them. Um, what do you guys make of that? Sorry, with you, Paige. Uh, yeah, I mean, Coach Maria kind of said it perfectly. If it's working, don't fix, don't change it. <laughs> don't change nothing. So, um, it ain't broke, don't fix so- it. Exactly. So for me, I think they're smart to keep their formation. Um, I think they're smart to keep their lineup as consistent as it has been. Um, obviously, they, they've they lost some players due to injury, which is unfortunate. Um, but they still have a deep enough bench that they've been fine throughout the tournament. Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, she put it perfect. It was, she did. She you know, did. It's, Sorry. It's, <laughs> she summarized it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, um, they've played as a unit, and I think that that's what we can appreciate with Italy. Uh, let's flip over to England, Nick. Um, they've changed. Uh, Garrett Southgate's kind of played around with this formation all tournament. 4-2-3-1, 5-3, 5-2-3, uh, 3-4-3. Um, do you think this is the best setup for them in this game? I don't know if they have a best setup, which is almost a good thing for a club, being able to be flexible. Um, Mm -hmm. That's something that a lot of international teams don't have. The fact that the England squad can go 3-4-3 like they are going today, by the way, I like the formation. I think this is a very... It's an attacking formation with five defenders, which is a very odd thing to say. You don't hear that very often when you have five defenders on the pitch. I know it looks like there's four midfielders, but Trippier and Shaw are their defenders just playing. Yep just playing wing back mid position sort of thing. It's an interesting tactic. They want to make sure that they have enough possession going forward. And with Shaw and Trippier getting around the corners and making those crosses, it's huge, obviously. And holy crap. Oh my God. Um, what just happened, what? Paige? I have no idea. What What, what just, just happened? happened? Is it a goal? I'm yes. uh, As usual, I'm behind. Are you so behind? Of course it's I'm goal. behind. Was it Shaw? Oh, Shaw? I'm rewatching the highlight right now. See, I'm Goes watching the, the goal. Corner. I think it's Shaw. <laughs> it is Shaw. He, uh, he laced it. Why does this happen every time we do a live watch? Within 30 seconds, there's a goal. Two and minutes into the match. It. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. And, and... I didn't even get to finish my point about Shaw yeah. making great runs into the box and score. <laughs> it finished it for you. Point my proven. Word. Point proven. Uh, point I think Nick. <laughs> to add to what you Mike said, Nick, the, the <laughs> fantastic part about this is like they're not getting count on, uh, caught on the counter with this formation. They're, no. they're so responsible defensively, and that's something I think, you know, Paige, you were questioning very early on in this tournament is do we oh, trust yeah. their defense? And I don't think defense has been the issue. They've been stellar. Um, I, which which I'm pleasantly surprised by because you, you did yeah. say I mean that was my biggest yeah I'm like Stones and Maguire dear Lord and Shaw what are we doing but I mean I can shut my mouth after this tournament so well <laughs> well I mean I think I've had to do the same thing with Raheem Sterling who's had a great tournament yeah. too and I, and I was and just I, gonna I was just gonna ask you that because I know we both kind of criticized him. Um, at the beginning of the tournament and our little, you know, pre-tournament prep show and things like that. What do you make of, of him now after, after watching the games? I've been thoroughly impressed. And this isn't to say that he doesn't have the talent. I think he's a super talented player. I think he's a leader in that locker room for England. Um, I'm just questioning it sometimes with his dives, with his movements. He was virtually invisible in the in the champion league's final right so like for me it's like i don't know when he's going to show up so i'm always always harder on him but he's shown up for england he's scored goals that have gotten them through he's gone in the penalty for them he's he's attacking he's getting the, the starts i mean everyone goes play jade and sancho and you're like but sterling's doing the same thing that sancho could do and why not go with the guy with the hotter leg yeah if he's hot you gotta play him right yeah like what did nick say earlier don't change it if it's broke or if it ain't broke, it broke. don't fix it thank you <laughs> um but uh nick do you have anything else to add about england um i like your point that you just made about uh sterling there i'm not a huge fan of raheem sterling i think he is a guy who like many in our generation or in this generation of soccer uh likes to dive and it makes me sick god i hate that um, that and also forcing moves young away from clubs. Like I don't know what the generation is right now with with 
athletes around all the leagues. It's like they're 20, 21, and they're like, I want to trade. I'm not happy here. And you're like, really? Yeah. I've See, seen- and that's I sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, but please. That that really irritates me because you see, like, you know, I always talk about the class of 92, that that um, generation of even though times were tough, they stayed within their club, they were loyal to their clubs, and they were extremely successful at their clubs. And I think a lot of the younger players, yeah, okay, they, they say they struggle, but, you know, sometimes you have to be put in that position and work through that position and then be successful at that club. And I think they're trying to skip that and be like, well, I'm not being played. I'm just going to go to a different team. I think you're not winning right away. But but I think the difference is between the 92 and now is that more clubs are willing to take a chance on those players. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're getting the opportunity to go somewhere else because people are giving them the opportunity to go somewhere else as opposed to back in 92, like how many guys were, were really shelling out a lot of money for a young player who hadn't been proven yet, even at their own club. Yeah. Nowadays people are seeing like one video because they're available online and being like, Oh, we got to sign this guy because he, he could be something special. Right. He turns out sometimes they're not, but for the most part, they think that they're going to turn into something special. So, right. Right. And then they get it for cheap then sell them for a hundred million pounds and the cycle continues. And I think these players want to win. They want to be in people's eyes. They want that money. They want to make that living. And I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of young players asking for trades or saying that I don't want to be here when you haven't really proven yourself. And part of the, you know, joy of winning with a club is the struggle of not winning with the club. You know what I mean? Right. So you, you see teams like Leicester and, and stuff who, who that the, when they won the the premier league, like that was such a iconic win because they had struggled for so long. And those players had been in that club struggling for so long that it was like epic. Right. And mm-hmm. and now you don't see that you bounce around from club to club. Okay. You go from this club, then you go to city City's probably guaranteed to win a, a title at some point, you know, you're going to win it. it. It's not as rewarding in my opinion. No, for sure. I, I agree with you there, Paige. It's it's one of those things that working through a club, trying to find a way to get to a club at the top makes it so much more enjoyable at the end. And sorry, I'm going through a whole lot of stuff on my phone. I'm just dealing with a bunch of graphic stuff. But this is that's what makes it so important. And that's why I was always so loyal to a lot of the teams and probably to a fault at some point that I didn't give up on some teams. But I think it's so much more valuable once you get to the top with the team that gave you your first chance. Well, you talk about bandwagoners versus loyal fans. And and it's like, well, our team is doing well. This is why I fell in love with this team and because you're winning. And then when they start losing, you kind of go, I'm going to hide. It's like the Homer Simpson uh, meme where he just shows up and then he just whoop. (laughs) and we see this in, in a lot of sports. You want winners. That's what brings the money. That's what brings the fans in. But what happens when your team's not winning? Are you still going to be a fan? You, you should be. You should be their highly critical fan. I mean, yeah. I'm talking to three United fans here who've seen a dip in form in the last 10 years or eight years. So stick your team through. And I think that's that's kind of why my mentality, and I think I'm just going to echo what you guys are saying, is these players force your moves and you're like, just wait find a way to make it happen if you don't have the grind and the grit to get anywhere i don't think i want to sign you yeah well and, and i understand move i mean because i've moved clubs too like i get it if it's not a good environment for you then move but mm-hmm. if it's just for i'm not playing 90 minutes every single game then you know that's not always the answer and that's not always like like we've talked about you know having the grit do i necessarily want to sign that player just because they couldn't fight through a tough situation because a lot of it is about the character of the players as well. And I think that shows character. Yeah. And then one player that comes to mind is Rubinho. Um, When he came to England, when he was playing and touted as the next Pele or the next big thing and you go, okay, but you haven't shown me anything. You haven't shown me anything, but you want to keep moving to these big clubs. And you also look at Alexander Pato who went from, his Brazilian side, and I always forget, I believe it was Internacional. Then he goes to AC, then goes back and forth and just wasn't consistent. But these guys were like, I want to go, I want to go. But not everyone's going to get that opportunity. I think you have to, it's the mindset, right? Like it Paige, you're saying like, it's the mindset. It's, it's, you want to win, but why not do the best to win with the team you have now? So people can see that. And, you know, an example of that, that 
has that mindset is N'Golo Conte, who's one of your favorite players of all time. I mean, Love him. you see what he did with Leicester. You see what he does with Chelsea. You see what he does with the French national team. I don't ever see him complain. I just see him growing. Well, and I, I, if I'm a coach, you know, I want those players that are that are going to buy into what we're doing. They're going to buy into to the the philosophy and the club. And um, you need those players to carry those teams and to be successful, especially if you're more of an underdog team, especially in somewhere like the Premier League where it's very competitive. I mean, you kind of see it with um, the French League uh, last season with Lille being incredibly successful. And I'm sure part of that has to do with these players buying into the coaches' philosophies, buying into the system, giving 100%. They're not just, mm, this is difficult, I'm going to go find a new club. But I, I, I want players, if I'm a coach, I want players who are going to grind and who are going to work hard. And, and I think those are, uh, you know, this game is kind of an indication of that too. You have two teams that kind of are those like work hard grinding teams. They're not overly flashy, you know, maybe Italy a little bit more than England, but um, with them changing styles and stuff, we've always seen them to be incredibly defensive, which mm-hmm. is dog's work, you know, yeah. and But not to say that they aren't defensively responsible. The ability of the Italians to fill the channels and make sure that nothing gets through is is pretty good. Maybe not the goal. Maybe not the goal, but (laughs) you know. But traditionally, I mean, defending is in their blood. Like that's something they grow up learning about, right? So Mm -hmm. the attacking now is is the more exciting part for them because we know they can defend, but now seeing them attack is is really exciting. And I think Coach Maria kind of touched upon that as well. God. Okay. But he, this is I the have... second or third time he's done that in his career, by the way. Yeah. 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 Paige I doesn't like Shaw. Shaw. <laughs> Paige doesn't like hate... Paige is Mourinho one... <laughs> here. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I really, I can't put a finger on it. I couldn't even explain it. It's, I don't know if it's like the more, okay. The more I've learned about him, the less I've, come to hate him I don't love him unless I've come to hate him but after the goal one of my friends texted me and she goes your boy's on fire (laughs) people know people know it's a deep not hatred now disliking of Shaw but yeah yeah But I bet you everybody is like me and they're like, I can't even tell you why. It's, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? He's he's proving himself. And and like you said, he fights back every time. And I think he's shut a lot of people up at this point, yeah. especially after today. So. <laughs> right, right. I think, I think with Sean, and maybe this is what I've kind of picked up from fans, is he was bought very young, didn't really play well. Um picked up an injury of course not his fault but you know we haven't really seen much of Shaw until this season when you're like hey the long game actually worked out here I think I think we have somebody um but it took him a while to get to that and I think when United fans were winning so much and we were winning so many games and then this guy comes in you're like we want immediate results and then we didn't get it we used to win games we used to um so England's been finding that back post day on all their crosses okay just yeah yeah mhm Well, and I think it's being taught a lot more too. Like when you see at a younger age, they're now teaching you to drive the line and cut it back into the box. Like, you know, hit that, like you're saying that low driven pass. So I think the more it's being taught, the more people are, are using it and it's becoming effective. Um, I also love to see now that 
they utilize more the throw in that's across. Like some mm. of these guys can just freaking whip the ball. Kyle in there. Walker a few times. Yeah. Oh my god. And yeah, it comes in a pace. Eh? It, it like it just. <laughs> oh, it, it's it's like they've hit the ball and. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. And you've seen it a couple times in the tournament. I mean, a couple of the teams have some key players and it's just like, we have to defend this like a cross. Like it's just as dangerous as a cross would be. I've never heard of that. No. Well, I think it's very underutilized. Like, you know, it's a set piece at the end of the day. And Mm -hmm. we've played against, I've played against teams before where the coach is like, if you're going to clear the ball, make sure it's on the other end of the field because we don't want that player throwing the ball into our box. So if you're going to clear it, yeah. Because it's like giving up, it's like giving up a corner or a free kick and the, and mm-hmm. you know, it's such a hard thing to defend against because it's not a corner or a free kick. No, no. <laughs> Teams that have long ball specialties. The old British style, but now you can use it with your with your throwing arm. Um key players looking at as we hit the the roughly the 20 minute ish mark. Um key player for Italy, Paige. Sorry, I was looking up what team it was with the throw, and now I want to know. Um, um... Oh, really? The Reds? Throw in coach for Liverpool. Yeah. But I've never seen them. I've never seen them whip one in like that. At least not as often. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is fair. Whatever advantage um, you can get. Yeah, right. I would take it. But no, back to key players. That's what we were talking about. That's where we we're getting to. Oh. <laughs> Let's start with Italy, please, shall we? Yeah. Take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me worked up. <laughs> Um, for me, I think Immobile is going to be a huge player. He's had quite a great tournament, in my opinion. Um, he's been, uh, he makes great runs through the defensive line. He, he opens the space up. Um, I think Donnarumma as well is a key player. He's been fantastic. He's really saved them a couple times, especially in their last game. Um, he, Spain. I don't know. He's yeah. been so good. Yeah. He really has like against Spain in the last, I think it was, um, maybe the last 10 minutes they had like 10 shots on that and he was getting every single one i'm like how is this guy still breathing oh, his but reach was ridiculous oh my it's word. wild and, and that's I, why yeah <sighs> yeah the michael phelps of uh <laughs> <For> football <laughs> His wingspan is like twice oh, as high. but even his legs too like he gets down and you're like wait what and he's very yeah. very smart i think like very uh he reads the game very well so for me he if he's he's had a great tournament if he can continue with that he's going to be a a key player for them and it's weird it's not weird but i think it's different to you don't often have your goalkeeping keeper being your you know most important player or key player you're always looking to like a midfielder or or a striker to score the goals and stuff so i think he's really um put himself in that role and and it's really great for him yeah I think Donnarumma has enough to be 
the best Italian keeper of all time. And I've said that to you before. I yeah, think you said he, that. he has the makings of, of passing Buffon. And, um, I know, I know Nick is a huge Buffon fan, but I think the skill his, set, his athletic, brain is like <laughs> the skill set, the athleticism, right. Right. I think he has it. It's okay, not but me do you being think disres- people it's not were... me being Go, Go ahead. I was oh, saying I it's just... not me being this <laughs> All right. We're we're both ready to fight him. Um I was going to say do you think they were saying that about Buffon at, when he was, you know, I'm seeing it now. And and this is not a disrespect to, to Buffon. I've absolutely loved him. I think, you know, when you're when you when you see a, a guy with that much energy, that much talent, it's just great. But when you take a look at Donnarumma, there's that athleticism, that thinking, that range, the modern day keeper. I don't know. I, I genuinely think he has the ability to to be the next big keeper in the world. Um and I think he can pass Buffon. Right. I'm just starting some, some sort of, some sort of like. (laughs) If you're listening, let us know what your, what your thoughts are. Yeah. We're we're going to put a poll out. See, I can't do that because I'm in the minority on this and (laughs) I already know the answer. (laughs) Um, Here, I'll do that. I'll put it as we speak, but um, Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Stay healthy, stay on the field. <laughs> I think he he looks okay. I think he'll be in there in a minute. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. It's like, have you guys seen that um that video of I I can't maybe it was a mobile or Insigne or somebody, and they go down in the box and then they score like two seconds after. Yeah, and, and then, then he gets up, up going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that blows my mind. I wanted to ask Maria about what she thinks when people just get and then they drop and you're like Oh, that bothers me. We've played against a player like that, even on our school team. Um, and I will. And, I'm and currently I, playing against players like that. Yeah. See what you do with those players. You foul them hard. And you oh, go, you, that's a foul. And you go in. That's how you hit somebody. Well, Don't and drop like a twig. They're going to think twice about getting into that tackle again. So. I just go like I I got the ball. Got the ball. I just left a bruise. Might as well. I know he's been doing an all tournament. Oh, I know. I think it's just they're gonna play him short so he can do this. Yeah. Um. Hold on, hold on. Let me give you my Italy key player. Ready? Oh, I didn't say it. Oh, no. I was just agreeing to the fact that I think he could be the best of all time. No, it's okay. It's okay. We're, we're fighting today. It's okay. <laughs> um, Mom and I'm dad, going, relax, please. I'm going with the old man in the back. I think Kayleen is going to be huge. If he can cover ground, if he can make a play out of the back, if he can bark orders, I think anyone and anybody around him is going to listen to him. Um, if he starts to slow down, and that was my biggest question mark with Italy's defense, is if he starts to slow down, or we're going to see more channels in between them. Um, so as long as he stays solid, he's going to be the most important Italian player. Also, I, I obviously don't know the man personally, but I loved when they went picked to... picked up everybody. <laughs> well, yeah. And then when they went to do the coin flip for the penalties with Spain, 
Jordi Alba. Jordi Alba. I know, and he's like laughing, and then he's like. He's like, I'm here to win. We see what happened there. We did. All right, should we flip over to England? We should flip over to England. Um, Irfan, why don't we start with you? Since we almost missed you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm picking Calvin Phillips. The guy has been covering the pitch like an engine that could he's like he's just going he's he he's in the box at one point then he's in the other box and you're like dude i love what you're doing with this um and i think that's what allows england to play with a, a midfield of two and get away with it because he covers ground like three midfielders to begin with um if he can make sure that Jorginho doesn't get enough of the ball or Verratti doesn't get enough of the ball um and that and that you know, passing game doesn't happen with with the Italians and their transition. I think uh, Calvin Phillips is going to be important, and of course, we're going to say Harry Kane and whatnot. But let's pick a, let's pick a, the Leeds man. That's a good call, honestly. I think I think he's going to be a very key player in this match. I would have had him as my key player personally. By the way, apparently I've been muted for the last little bit, folks. I apologize. That's my fault on the production end. My key player. We'll go back to it for Italy really, really quick is Jorginho in the middle, I think the distribution, that's why. For England, though, it's yeah. the wingbacks. Shaw and Trippier are going to be so important in this match because they are key up and down the field. On defense, bringing five defenders in against this Italian attack is going to be huge because the Italians only use a three-man attack. The midfielders don't get up the side like the English squad does. So there's a lot of bodies that need to be in that middle to stop the Italian attack. And I think bringing Shaw and Trippier in when they get on the defense is huge for England. And then attacking, we've already seen it once. These guys get into the box. These guys make great crosses. So they're going to be huge moving forward as well. So I think they are the key players for England. I know you're supposed to pick one, but it's the position, I guess, that I'm picking the wing back position. (laughs) Well, we've seen it. We've seen fair, we've seen yeah. Shaw, we've seen Trippier, and the reason why they've gone with this formation, uh, I mean Emerson's venturing forward and he's finding games. So I mean it's the game of the fullbacks. Yeah, Report. absolutely. Paige, what's up, my dude? Who is your key player for England? Well, I'm not going to say the wingbacks. <laughs> you could say Trippier. But... Do you not like Trippier either? Um, no, I. He's not worth forty million. If that's I agree. Trippier. If if that's the question, then no. But um, for me, I think Phillips has been fantastic. I would agree with you. Um, I, I, I mean, I watch um, all Premier League games, and and for me, he was extremely underrated coming into this tournament. And I think we've seen him just be fantastic. And like you said, I mean, you said it perfectly. Like he covers so much ground. He's all over the field. He does the the hard work to mm-hmm. to make the big guys look good. Right. Um, He's the modern day uh, James Milner, in my opinion. The way he's able to play different things, find okay. spaces. Yeah. Hey, Liverpool, go get him. Go get him. I would I would agree. I, I've i been happily impressed here. I think, for me, the key player to not make a mistake is going to be Pickford. If Pickford <laughs> makes an error, we're toast. So I, Hey, I this sounds key- familiar, Irfan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a key player for who's going to win us a game. It's who's going to lose us a game. <laughs> this sounds familiar. Hey, can you do your pew pew? Ready? Pew pew pew. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but, oh, yeah. yeah. Pickford, Pickford is a question mark for me. I think he has in, incredible goalkeeping ability, just zero ability with the ball at his feet. Oh, like, he's like a freaking. He looks like a giraffe that was just birthed, trying to stand up half the time when he's like <laughs> kicking the ball. It just doesn't look. He doesn't look comfortable on the ball, which he looks very uncoordinated on the ball. Yeah. Fitting as he wears a yellow kit. Yep, it's green. Yeah, baby giraffe. It's green. Yeah, yeah it's green. <laughs> I thought it was Today it's green. Today it's green. Oh, it's been sorry. Yellow. I keep thinking of last game when he was barking orders and was like, "You made the mistake." <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Um, another another big key that I think might go not talked about in a lot of uh, match conversations that you hear is the bench. I think England has a super deep bench in comparison to Italy. I don't see a whole lot of players on the Italian bench that I'm like, oh yeah, they can come in and make a make a huge impact. Whereas like you look at the England bench, you got 
Grealish who can come in and make an impact. You have Rashford who can come in and make an impact, right? You have Saka who's played really well in this tournament. He could come in and make an impact. I know I'm naming a lot of attacking players, but Sancho's also on the bench there. Reese James, who has looked good in his limited action so far in this tournament. Jude Bellingham could come in off the bench. Jordan Henderson is another key player who could come in off the bench, right? You look over on the Italian side, like Bernadeschi, Bastoni, they they might be able to make a, an appearance. Florenzi, obviously, he's healthy now. Um, will he end up making a, a, a sub in at right back? But outside of that, I don't see a whole lot of huge game breakers off the bench. Yep. So the Italians aren't going to make as many substitutions as the English, and could that come back to bite them? That might be a key to the game. Not necessarily a key player, but a key to the game. Mm-hmm. I agree. I definitely Well, agree. they need a lead, right? I think Italy needs a goal. And in order for them to get that goal, then those subs actually make sense because they're just going to run you down. And get well, now they win. need two. For now game. they need two to win. <clears throat> two to win, right. one to get it into pens. And you, we know England's history well, with penalties. So, and oh, Well, same thing with the Why, why you got to do that, Paige? Why? <laughs> we... The question I have for you guys here is the Italians didn't look very good as the game progressed against the Spain side, like against, against the Spanish side. I mean, tired. it looked... Yeah, very much so tired. And um, like 85th minute on, it just looked like Spain should have won that game. They didn't. I but I, I will say, I think um, I think Spain carries a lot more possession than England will. And I mm-hmm. think that's what potentially hurt Italy is, is Spain is a very much a possessive team. They want to have the ball. They want to have control of the ball. They go left to right most of the game like they don't necessarily i mean they did attack a lot against italy in the last game but throughout the tournament we've seen them go a lot left to right left to right but mm-hmm. and i think that's where you see the fatigue then set in in italy is they've been they defended most of that game you know oh, and absolutely. It, whereas i think against england they're not gonna defend as much like england will not have as much possession as spain had so i think Mm-hmm. this could potentially be less fatigue for them. We yep. will see it. We won't see it affect them as much in this match, but right. I mean, I agree with you. We did. They did look very tired in that Spanish game. At, at one point it was 10 Spanish players just around the box of Italy's yeah. box. It looked like a, a little shimmy a shinny game where it's like, let's just see if we can score. And obviously Spain can't score. So right. <laughs> Morata especially can't score. <laughs> Poor guy though. Like I, I really feel for him. Like, he has he's taken a lot of hate. He's, he's a good, hardworking player. We saw it all tournaments. Same thing with Gerard Moreno. They just couldn't score. Yeah. And and everyone goes, well, you know, he's no David Villa and Fernando Torres. It's like, right. But Morata is, is a goal poaching striker. He's mm-hmm. not a goal scoring striker, if that makes sense. He's, he's like an opportunist. Yeah, and he's a great opportunist, but you need to pair him with a goal scoring striker to be valuable because you need a guy who can take the shots from outside of 12 yards and force the keeper into a save because then Morata's like, perfect, I'm here, this is mine, I will clean up the mess. That's what you need, mm-hmm. though. And they yeah. didn't have that on that Spanish squad anymore. The, once uh, Without Torres, who has been their linchpin of a striker for the longest time, they haven't had a real goal-scoring striker in that system. Well, and then you're putting all the pressure on Morata because now he's your your main exactly your mm-hmm. main goal scorer, your main number nine. And, and like we've said, that's not his... No, but Danny Almo playing in a false nine actually worked much better than having a traditional striker. Absolutely, for, but I don't so think maybe, he's a goal scoring striker either, though, right? No, so. no, he's not. But I mean, it looked they looked better when he was playing as a Absolutely. false nine. The so. one thing I will say about this match, and Paige, you brought up the fact that Spain did a great job with possession against Italy because that's the way they play, and England's not really too worried about it because they're they are a counter attacking team, and there's no doubt about it. This is a counter attacking style of of. Uh, footy that England play. Italy hasn't played a true counter-attacking team in this tournament, maybe outside of Wales. And I wouldn't say Wales is a great team to compare that to, right? Austria is not a counter-attacking team. They are an opportunity team, but they're not a counter-attacking team. They still build up and try to find their spot when they get possession, right? Belgium is a possession team. Spain is a possession team. Switzerland is a defending team. And Turkey... I don't really have anything to say about Turkey because they didn't look very disappointed, good in this right? So I can't really say what they are. They haven't faced a counterattacking team like England this entire tournament, and for a long time, I'm going to assume. Mm-hmm. How are they going to handle the counterattack when Sterling, Kane, Mount are all coming at them full force? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a big question mark. It's a big question mark. I think this might be their toughest 
this tournament's probably been their toughest test in the last 33 undefeated matches. And I know, Nick, you were telling me about this yesterday with your stats going, who they really face that scares the crap out of you? Nobody. They face five big teams and, oh, that was almost a goal. Um, they face five big teams, really. Yeah. And in those five matches, they have three draws. And the only two wins are the last two mm-hmm. against Spain and Belgium. Outside of that, the run has been a lot of lesser teams, a lot of weaker teams. So, yes, 33 unbeaten games is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But you have to break down who they played in those 33 matches and how many of those were draws against teams that they should not be drawing against. It's about right. It's about I'm right. not trying to rip on Italy. I think this is a very good Italian squad. As I said, I think they're kind of in the middle of that transition from the old guard to the new guard. Still trying to figure out how to play together, but they're very good. Are they good enough to win this tournament? I guess we'll see in the next little bit, but it's it's a question mark for me. Mm-hmm. As you ask that question, let me let me pull up the poll to see what the vote count is. Because last time I checked, it was quick. It was we're at sixty seven percent on Twitter think England will win. Uh, so sixty seven percent of people agree with me. We didn't actually give our predictions, by the way. I'd like to point that out. Sure. Why don't we get to it? Uh, well, we Nick, can't now. There's a goal on the board. <laughs> I had picked Italy yesterday before the, the start of this, and I told you that. So um, I, I, I was leaning Italy just by a small margin, but, you know, I was wrong with the Copa final yesterday. Might be wrong for this one. We'll see. Yeah, you were don't wrong. Don't laugh with the at Copa me. Final. I Who did you have for the Copa final? <laughs> well, uh, the team that lost. <laughs> Oh, wrong. that was a stupid question. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was gonna text him because I'm an Argentina fan as well. I don't technically have any country. Canada's never been in a big world stage since I've been, you know, around. So <laughs> since I've been on this earth, <laughs> since we've been around. Um, so like I get, I've always just enjoyed watching soccer and Argentina when we were young was fantastic to watch. So I like Argentina. So I almost texted her as soon as that happened. I'm like, ha ha ha. You're wrong. <laughs> I was so mad. Um, I was also doing some work for, for class. I was in the background and I just go, oh, and the whole, like for the, the last 30 minutes of the game, is Messi going to get his final championship? Is he going to get the championship? Is he gonna... And I'm like, guys, just focus when on the game. When he missed that Look. chance, I'm like, oh God, here we go. They're, Brazil's going to go up the field, <laughs> score a goal. Well, they countered. And ruined they this. countered after that. Yeah, they but, did. Um, but I will say, I think, I think Messi needed that because he's gotten a lot of hate for not having like um, titles for Argentina and stuff like that, where you know Portugal and Cristiano well, the, Ronaldo. The stat yesterday was so. Maradona and Pele have not won a Copa America title. That that was a stat that was being yep. being said. So on why the air. is Messi getting so much hate for? Because it? he's not getting compared to Pele and Maradona. He's getting That's compared true. to Ronaldo. Right, because mm-hmm. they're playing in the same era. But that's the reason. That's the reason. Yeah. It's a bad reason. I, I know. I just it's stupid. No, I agree with you. It's a bad reason. Yeah, it is. And and you know what? He has a one up. He didn't have to score with his hand. So there you go. Yes, uh, that was for a World Cup. <laughs> there was for a World Cup. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. <laughs> My sister in the background just told me to move on. <laughs> <laughs> she's um, like i'm done with this topic <laughs> well because i said it all all evening yesterday i think she's tired of it she shakes her head um uh but no congratulations to argentina i thought um i told you nick i, I think uh di maria is going to be a key player and man was a lightning rod lightning rod crappy goal great finish yeah <laughs> i was trying to explain that to my father yesterday i'm like it was a crappy goal it should never have happened but my god was it a great finish <laughs> I will say I missed the game. It was at about 2 a.m. my time, so I was asleep. Yeah. It was very, very chippy. I watched some of the, the highlights of the goals, but that's all I, I didn't was, catch. It was a little goal. ugly, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think it was a good match either for either team. I don't think either team played very well. It was a lot of mishandling of the ball, a lot of giveaways, a lot, a lot of, of eight tackles. hard tackles. I wouldn't necessarily say too many dirty tackles. A few near the mm-hmm. end were a little bit dirty. But overall, it was mostly just hard tackles. Like, mm-hmm. And the Argentinians and Brazilians are not known for their hard tackles. So it's like, ah. And they're not known for taking tackles very well No, either, so it was so. interesting to see. But, but everyone was up and up and going. So Yeah. Congratulations to the Italians. Congratulations to Leo. Um, 
All right, we need some uh, sterling shots here for my bet. Oh. <laughs> I think you mean Argentina. You said congratulations to the Italians. Oh, did I say Italians? Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I take back. I take back. Congratulations <laughs> to the Italians. Um, me and Miss saying things. Since I have a thought. I have too many thoughts. It's okay. Too many thoughts. So go, it's almost halftime here. I know we've got like maybe about seven minutes till half. Yeah. If you're Italy, if you're what, – what changes do you make? I don't think anything. I don't think they've played better. No. They got caught no. on a very early goal. That was, again, mm-hmm. just a great run into the box. and the, uh, Honestly, it was an overcross, if anything. That was finished. Like, they and haven't what played do, What bad. do you say to your team? What do you say to your team at half? Same thing. We haven't played bad. Just keep playing. Get some more just shots on playing. Pickford. <laughs> yeah, just make Pickford make a mistake. Just press him. <laughs> make sure it goes to him and just... Well, no, but like that's that's honestly where they're at right now because they have zero shots on net. Yep, and they have almost sixty percent of the possession. They have zero shot. They have sixty-one percent possession. Well, from what oh. I'm seeing. Oh yeah. They have, they have zero shots on net. They have three shots total, and in fact, Insigne has at least two of them <clears throat> because I have a bet that he needed one and a half. He got over one and a half, so I know he has at least two shots. It's just, they just need to do more. And this is a good opportunity here as they get a free kick from about 30 yards out there. Would you say, yep. Paige? Yeah, about that. Roughly 30. Am I ahead <laughs> of you guys? Yes. I'm at uh, maybe just a little. Okay. Because you said free kick. I'm like, mm, nope, we're past that. <laughs> They're just taking it now. So. No, yeah, I'm way ahead of you guys then. No. Yeah, I'm at that point. Um. Okay. So I'm putting out that Buffon Donnarumma question. Awesome. Was it good to go, Paige? Yeah. Oh, I put one on Instagram already. Oh, okay. Did you use the same one? I was just like, grammar. Yeah, but, use the okay. same one. It, it was good to go, so I put it up there. Okay, I'll put it on for for three hours because we'll... All right, so if you're listening, go vote on... Is it on Twitter? Twitter or uh, Instagram? I put it on Twitter, yeah. yeah. Let us know. Um, please gently call me out if you think I'm wrong. Harshly or be like me and just straight out call them out. No gentle about it. <laughs> Um, well, the polls vote. are going in my favor already. So, well, yes, obviously. What do you mean? I'm gonna obviously? go vote right now. Oh, okay, I'll be the only. You know, I'll vote too, and I'll, I'll be the only vote that, <laughs> that I get. Um, we'll do the that. vote's at fifty-fifty right now. So, oh ho, that's one hundred percent on uh, Twitter. So, just saying, I just split it. <laughs> For now, still has, still has 100%, but whatever. <laughs> oh, so <high>. um, <clears throat> what does England need to do? Um, going into halftime, I know they have to a way to control the ball, no one can control they the ball with the their ball. feet right now. And well, they just need to hold possession at this point, too, because they've defended for well, I mean, not right now, but they've defended for the last 10 minutes, and they've sorry, there's just a little incident going on. Wait, wait, wait. You guys are behind me. That's okay. You can explain it to us. And then when we see it, we can be like, oh, we already knew it. As I was saying that, I think Mount like broke through, but um, they need to find a way to, to hold the ball. Like you're saying, I mean, the, they, their touches are not great, but they can't string passes together right now. Yeah. Graham yeah. Sterling dropping, like <laughs> walking into a, a wall and just going, that's a foul. But he didn't even walk into a wall. The guy barely touched him. Yeah, and he dropped. It was like the penalty against. Um, no, Denmark. it was worse than that in my yep. opinion. No. Oh, Declan Rice making little runs is fun. Declan Rice has been pretty good. I don't like that he's what do you complaining guys make... after, but whatever. Well, yeah. What do you guys make of Foden starting the first couple of games and now being on well, the bench? Isn't he's he hurt, hurt now? Oh right, they did say that. He's not even. Yeah. He's not even. But in when, lineup, he was, when, he right. when he was 100%, when he was 100, when he was. But when he was 100, he was he was on the bench as well. I think it came down to formation. He'll yeah, that one the, was a formation role. thing when he was when he was healthy and on the bench. That was a formation. He was. They wanted a different look. They love Foden on this squad. So. Well, yeah, he's been uh, pretty good. Throughout what did the he say? What did he say that if they win this, um, everyone on the team's going. Everyone's got to get M&M the same haircut bleach. as him. Yep. <laughs> I would love to see it tomorrow. If they win, everybody better have the same haircut. Thank God Shaw has no hair, right? They're not to watch him play with United with the M M&M. and M. 
Oh my god. Harry Maguire though. You know, everyone everyone life. targets him to make mistakes, you know, pressure and whatnot. Now he's just gonna stick out even more. The guy with the blonde hair. The, the tall guy at the back. <laughs> him and Stones are gonna look ridiculous, but it's fine. We got four minutes of extra time before half here. Four minutes. Yeah, I'm like ten seconds to the forty five, so same. Yep. Hey, I'm not the yeah, only one guys. who's behind. Yeah. Oh. I'm just celebrating goals before you guys are. That's fine. You can do that. We're like maybe 15 seconds behind. So makes a big difference when there's a goal scored. Yeah, but we didn't notice the first goal was scored until, you know, about 15 seconds right. after. <laughs> when you're like, so we might still recognize it first. Yeah. Everybody was like, wait, what? I didn't even know the game wait, had I'm, started yet, to be honest. I'm telling <laughs> you, every time we do up. a live. Every time we do a live viewing, someone scores a goal too quickly. Hmm. Yeah, we were doing hey, lineups. Okay. I didn't even see it. Pickford can launch the ball. His haircut is terrible too, may I add. <laughs> Who? Pickford? I really, Pickford, Pickford, I hate his haircut. We're very like, style people. We're you. very style people, apparently. We're talking haircuts. We talk jerseys before the game. We I'm talk. so hypocritical because I'm I am the first person to say you know what we shouldn't judge the players by their size or body weight or all these things. and I'm like his haircut's stupid. <laughs> I usually stick to talking about jerseys. That's my thing. Mm. Yeah, their fun knows that. <laughs> yes. Okay, tell me what was your favorite jersey throughout the tournament? The best jersey. Wow. Ooh. Um, I have one. Go ahead and start. My favorite was the black um, Czech Republic. No, not Czech Republic. Croatia jersey. Which Croatian one? Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Uh, the black with the Czechs on. Oh, I love that, that one. It one. looked nice. That was a good one. I like the Belgian one, honestly. Like the, the red and yellow one. is. Mm. That's just a solid kit. I'm trying to think. I'm not a huge fan it's... of the numbers on the front of the England kit. I will say that. Hmm. I really didn't like. Um, I like a lot the of England the with the blue who... shorts, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. Um, a lot of the teams that had Puma as their jersey sponsor, I didn't like the the jerseys. The fit was kind of weird. Puma always does a weird fit. Mm. They're a little bit tighter in random spots or something. Yeah. yeah. And the neck was like really wide. It was a little odd for me, but. Yeah, but that's always been Puma style is the wide neck. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, but I then they're super when, like fitted. Yeah. Well, they've gone they've gone with the tight fit, and a lot of the yeah. other ones like Nike and Adidas have the option for both. So mm-hmm. right. You see some guys who like live and die by the tight fit, and it's just like ah, like sure, do your thing. I've mm-hmm. actually found myself going more to a tight fit. Like the TFC jersey I have is is more of a tight fit. Yeah, but some of them are like really. I mean, uh, I'm not a guy. I don't know if it's comfortable or not for me. I I don't like that. I don't want it to be super tight. Yeah, it has um, to be the right amount of right amount of stretching. Right, fitted, yes, like a good cut, no problem. Yeah. Especially because the the women's jerseys are cut a little bit differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Some of them, I'm like, I don't love it. Don't love it. Yeah, no, I completely get what you're saying. Like a, a true tight fit is not comfortable for me either. But like a fitted one with a nice little stretch to it is that's kind of where I've been leaning more as opposed to like growing up. I was always baggy. Like, yeah, yeah. like yeah, I show straight up. When you I, need a small baggy, I don't want it to like, touch me. Like, yeah, Baggy with like short shorts. I had a uniform when you're. Oh, like no, we never one. did like short we, shorts. We were like, what happened? Oh, we, we kind of ordered everything small. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no, can't do short. shorts. Um, <clears throat> what do you guys make of the the whales? yellow kit to me they looked like australia yeah i was going through trying to figure out which one because i remember saying it and i was like huh it's the aussies are they there no yeah, well when we made, watched the game i was literally sure. like oh i made that joke you made that joke we all made that joke uh it's not bad but i mean it but that's so iconic australia you yeah. know yeah. yeah not wales when i i think of wales i don't think yellow and green yeah. no I wasn't a big fan of the dragon. Portugal white kit either. I know a lot of people like it. I it's not white, it's green. I it's hate green. it. It's light green. See, Whatever. I was gonna say, you I knew what I meant. It, you guys but... knew exactly which kit I meant. Don't don't jump on me. It's yeah, white it's on the awful. sleeve. 
it's white uh, on the sleeves. I'm, I'm pretty to... sure it's white on the sleeve. It's like this. I don't know. I didn't mind it, but to me, that was the worst jersey in the tournament. The the Dutch black with the collared orange was pretty nice. Like the orange yeah. black. Yeah, but that's good. that's just their look at this point. Oh, that's good. We are at yeah. halftime, by the way. We are at halftime. Um, we're having some guests join us shortly. I hope, but. In the meantime, it's one nothing England at the end of the first half, even though Paige is like, I did this a minute ago. Thanks a lot. Um, but been an entertaining final. You know, we, we, we usually think finals are going to be boring. No one wants to give away space. But I think each team's had the opportunity to operate the way they want to. And obviously an early goal is what we see. But not bad. Not a bad game so far. Not the most exciting game of the tournament. Not the least exciting game of the tournament. Hmm. Okay, which one has been the most boring game of this tournament? Spain, Sweden for me was the okay. most boring game. Okay, so I, I would agree with you on that one. It was there was a few group stage games that I was like, uh, but that one definitely was near the top. Yeah, for me that was because Sweden sat back and defended, and Spain went left to right the whole game, and that was it. That's all that happened. Yeah, they didn't do anything. Neither team did anything with the possession, though. They were just kind of like, yeah. We don't need to do anything. We're just going to sit this one out. <laughs> yeah, but it was just kind of dull and I don't know. I didn't enjoy it. But I will say the semifinal games and the round of 16 games were great. Who's your tournament team? Who's the team of the tournament? Like North what Macedonia. Team you... Fine. Fine. <laughs> but <laughs> no, but like what? You asked. You guys... I answered. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I was kind of like, I was trying to prop, uh, put you in a different direction and, <laughs> and you didn't let me finish. <laughs> All right, so the question no. anyway. I'm right. <laughs> North, yeah, you're right. Hungry, North, Hungry was my team of the tournament. I think they had the group of death and I think they, if they had been in any other group, they would have been fit. Like they would have made it. They through. would have, all oh, for sure. Unfortunately, um, they, they kind of got screwed, but I'll ask this question after, but I think our guests are in the wings. Let's let's bring them in, both with fresh haircuts since the last time we saw them. Uh, Paige, let's let's introduce them. Yeah, we've got some of our favorites. They've been on the show before. Um, you love them. We love them. They're always on as a duo. Kyle Luz, George Sleeman, how are you guys doing? Doing great. How about you guys? Fantastic. It's Euro final day. How, how could you not be doing great? Excited. We're, uh... Well, I mean, you're probably happy that England took that. <laughs> yeah, how are you feeling? How are both of you feeling? Not so great. Not so great. I mean, I, my, my money is on Italy, so. <laughs> I mean, I, I did point out, and I think remember in the pre-show where I was like, it's coming home. And you said, don't jinx it. You said, don't jinx it. <laughs> I want to say it again just to jinx it. <laughs> you know what, though? I think, George, you picked these two teams to have a good tournament, and, and yeah. they're sitting here. So uh, kudos to you for doing that. Um, I think you understood the value of both club, uh, both uh, both countries. Sorry, not clubs. Um, and we were like, yeah, okay, sure. But yes. um, we'll let you bask in the glory on that one. Take it all in. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, I honestly thought that, like it's t it's definitely tough, you know. We expected France to be a big team in the tournament, and I don't think a lot of people expected that. But I even have to give this guy kudos because he called Italy his favorites. Um, and I, I did. If they, if they go all the way, that's a that's quite a pick. Um, but I don't know. We we were just talking about it, and we just like you know England's early goal. Italy are trailing now. They've never been trailing in the Euro Cup whole tournament, so that's gonna be weird because they have to chase the game now, and that doesn't suit Italy's playing style. They're more of a dominant team. They like to dominate the game and dictate, which they showed a little bit of that in the right at the, towards the end of the half, but not convincing enough just yet for me, at least. So. No, I would definitely agree with you guys. I, what do you think they have to do to change for the? Well, we kind of talked about this before. Would you make any changes going into the second half if you're if you're Italy? That's a tough question. I don't know if I, I don't know who I would change. I definitely think they need to make some sort of changes because like what I saw, especially towards the end was they were started to dictate the game, but it felt like towards the final third, they didn't really know what to do. Like they ran out of their, their game plan kind of stopped. So I think they might need to make some more changes up front. I don't know exactly who they would need to do because everyone is playing pretty well. Um, they just, I, I think it's the lack of creativity that they need maybe or something along those lines, just to <laughs> throw some English defenders for a loop or something along those lines. Do they move their right back out? 
I mean, that's where England keeps to keeps throwing the ball in from from the wing or trying to put a pass through there. I mean, Bonucci's doing a good job covering it, but I mean, the right back, the Lorenzo, is is struggling on it. Do you do you go back three, let's say, and go wing backs and 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 change that sort of dynamic, or you're okay with their four three three? I don't know. Like I, I, you, yeah, it was really early on where you seemed that there were dealer Enzo was struggling a little bit because England's playing the wing backs, not fullback. So they're just a little bit more wider and it, it looks like they do need to change something, but I really don't mention he's going to do a formation change at halftime. I don't mm-hmm. see it happening. Um, and then, and especially with the lack of creativity, addition and in addition to England are playing with almost seven defenders you have five defenders and two holding mids that's going to be so hard to break down and they're really well drilled and Kane's dropping deep I, I don't know me and him we're talking about we, we think this is going to stay one nothing yeah the other thing that they could do is bring in who was the original starting back in Florenzi who got hurt and Di Lorenzo had to come in, that could be the option that they go with Irfan moving forward. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. if they're not confident with him at the back and they don't want to make that formation change, as, uh, as the guy said, he was their starting uh, wing back, right? So you make that change, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to trying, trying to get some energy into them. I mean, they're, they're playing well. It's just, they're just not breaking down England. Yeah. Let's let's pressure Pickford. That's what we're saying here. Yeah. Uh, make him make that mistake. But I mean, Pickford does play a little bit better on England than he does for Everton. So that's always something. He still can't control the ball with his feet, so it doesn't really matter. Right? <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah, they don't give him the opportunity to touch the ball with his feet. Yeah. See, with with England, he's he's uh, he's afraid to run out and and try and catch the ball. Maybe hurt a player while he comes down. Yeah. yeah. Van Dyke memory. Anyways, <laughs> not- <laughs> Big Fridge. <laughs> I'm still trying to, make re- the, to recover. Yeah, we're still trying to recover from that. What do you guys make of the goal? Good goal, deserved it. I mean, I feel like we were talking, I kind of missed it just a tiny bit, but um, they let me know about how open uh, Luke Shaw was. But I think Shaw took that very well. I mean, I don't think that Italy was really expecting him to take it first time like that, which threw them off and yeah. made it really difficult to deal with. I think but, they were like Martin Tyler called him a 30 goal finisher of that finish, right? Like you just like, he's you got the ability it. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took it ma- well. made it look easy. And but the defending, there's question marks. He was in a lot of space, and that's that's uncharacteristic of the Italians. Do you think they started flat? Uh, yeah, kind of a well, little bit. Yeah, as I said, I'm pretty I, sure it was just a uh, cross that went way too long for. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you, so you don't think Trippier was looking for that? I don't think he was looking for it. I think he was beneficial that Shaw made a good run into the box. I don't think that was his target for sure. Well, I think he was putting it in some sort of space. He was putting it into a space near the far post, but I still think it went longer than he expected. I I mean, because Shaw's in a really advanced position there, so it seems like almost as he could expect that to come over. But yeah, Yeah. like, you know what I mean, as a backup plan maybe. If if that's the drawn-out plan for the get-go, that this is the first opportunity to make it work, hey. Uh, it's tactical England for once, right? Yeah, it does put Italy England on the back. tactical? What? <laughs> we were just, we we're actually just comparing it. We're like, who, if if England win this Euro Cup final, like, and you see the golden generation compared to them, like, how, how is the golden generation not winning this? And how are these guys winning it? Like, it's just so different. Especially, even from the beginning of the tournament. Oh, I know the answer to that question, oh. actually. <laughs> all right, all right, let's give you the answer. Go, go. This defensive unit for England is probably one of the best defensive units we've seen since the World Cup run. And the reason is, no, 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 but don't, I think the attacking <laughs> unit of the golden generation was far superior to these guys. But the defensive unit, not that of players themselves, but the unit is better now than it was in the golden generation. Mm-hmm. The individuality of those players probably is weaker. Better. Yeah. No, I think the individuality of the players now is weaker than it was in the golden yes, generation at the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. But the unit as a whole, the ability to go from four at the back to three with two wing backs, yeah. and the ability to make those changes is better. And that's why this this team is probably going to be compared to the golden generation in a favorable way. And that's the only yeah. reason, because they shouldn't be. Well, pound for pound, Rio Ferdinand is better than both Stones. Oh, absolutely. And 100%. Absolutely. I'm not compare. denying that fact. Soul John Campbell's Terry's better. better than both of them, too. I'm not denying that fact, but as a unit, as a unit, this unit is better than that one. And and like the thing is with the golden generation, not many of them really liked each other. Like they're all kind of like, I'm Mr. Chelsea, Mr. Liverpool, Mr. United. And they're kind of, and this team, like, and that's where you give credit to Southgate. 
not mm-hmm. tactically, it's the culture and it's bringing them together, playing together. And I think you can see that in their defensive organization. Defensive. Well, do you think in terms of culture, do you think the culture around soccer has changed a little bit? Cause you see, you know, after games, players are going and hugging players from other teams and stuff like that. Do you think that plays into the culture of the national teams? I think normally because it's not so much like rivalry mm-hmm. anymore. And I think, um, Oh, what's his name? Roy Keane keeps mentioning it about how he's so annoyed that players yeah, he, are hates it. he hates it. Do you think that that has affected the the culture in the national team as well? well we, we kind of talked about this a little bit because at the beginning of the tournament, we felt like that was the problem was that most of these English players didn't like playing with each other because they were on different teams. And then I feel like once they got after the, um, uh, after the group stage, they realized maybe we could do this if we work together. Cause that's what it looks like. The first mm-hmm. third, in the group stage, they did not play as well as I just saw. Yeah. Especially against Scotland. Yeah. I was, when I watched him play against Scotland, I was like, England should not go very far. <laughs> but but so, I, I, they picked it up since then. That's true. They kind of went, you know what? We should play together and, and go from there. So, you know. Are you going to break that's some true. news that someone's transferring or what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Breaking <Mbappe>. news. <laughs> what's that? We're yeah. signing Mbappe? That's yeah. right. <laughs> New <laughs> substitution. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to, Roberto, what are you? What, what substitutions are we doing right now? But uh, what player to, do you want? <laughs> two pages point, um, and I think Roy can actually complain about this as well. Is you know you see Klopp and Guardiola go on the field and hug all their players after, and then he was like, "What kind of like? I'm, they're not my friend. You know, they're they're just I'm the manager, I'm the boss, and these are my players." And I think that yeah, on a broader perspective, yeah, that culture has changed. And there's less of a rivalry, and that's helped England in a positive way, yeah. in my opinion. Do you think, um, in terms of that as well, the the situation with Ericsson has made these teams really like come together, not just Denmark, but these other teams? Do you think that that's made an impact in the tournament? That's a good question. I didn't really thought of it that way, but I feel like that does because of like look at all the the whole reaction to what happened to Ericsson. Everyone was like this is still the sport coming together. That's, that's actually, yeah, that's actually yeah. a really good point. I never, I never actually considered that. Yeah. Um, but from a player's perspective, yeah. Cause you, at that moment, everyone was like, okay, you know what? We, we have to take it easy. It's not like soccer is only a secondary point to the rest of the world. Right. So uh, that's actually really interesting. And I actually really agree with that. That's yeah. Yeah, because that was kind of, I remember talking to my family about this and, and, you know, we've all played soccer before. And when something happens like that in, even if it's outside of soccer in your community, you know, you come together as the community. So for me, you know, we talk about this culture and them really putting aside their team rivalries. And I think maybe that also impacted it to the point where it's like, it's bigger than soccer. Like we are a family, we're a team, we're a brotherhood, we're, you know, an army, we fight together. And, yep. you know, maybe that's mention, why a lot England... of the guys, a lot of the England players have played with Ericsson or against Ericsson in the EPL. Right. Yeah. So they all know this guy personally. So it might've brought them together and be like, Hey, like, I agree you with you. That's a good point. At, you can even just look at Denmark alone after that happened. They, because they lost two games in the, the um, group stage and went on the way to the sem- semifinals, you know, uh, that, that something like that made them click and work together. And yeah. they played phenomenally after that. Absolutely. Right. And they were missing, you know, Ericsson, who's one of their better players. Yeah. Exactly. Damsgaard yeah. stepped in. You got to give him oh, full credit for that. He did very, very well. His yeah. goal against the, in the semifinal against England was brilliant. Yeah. That free kick. Well, Question to you both. Was it brilliant or was it poor goaltending? Both. It was, it was a great goal. There's, yeah, there's no question. That was a great Wait, goal. guys, I have a question. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you guys make? I already asked them, but what do you guys make of the penalty? Oh that- my god, I was literally. I was literally <laughs> He's ready. Like, hey, Started on this. If Paige doesn't ask this question, I'm asking, and that was my next. <laughs> Let's what hear do it, you guys George. Make of that? I I never post on Instagram, and I had to go to Instagram. I had to ask, what do you guys? What do people think? Because I thought it was completely not a penalty but i don't correct me if i'm wrong if there's somebody else that has a different opinion please educate me nick would you like to jump in here <laughs> all right nick, let's go here's the thing it was a soft pedally in my mind but it was a pedally nonetheless there was contact especially in the run-up before i don't know if there was a lot of contact when it was called but he was fouled a couple times before that on the run into the box and in the box so i think it warranted a pedally regardless is it soft? Absolutely. I'm not denying that fact, but it is a penalty. And if it should be a penalty call, it should be a penalty call. 
but there's another reason why it shouldn't be a penalty is the fact that there was two balls on the field before that. Right, and that's a whole different issue, but that's not what he asked. Yeah. He asked, was right. it a penalty? Yeah. It is a penalty. <laughs> yeah. Either way, yeah. there's, there's multiple reasons why I think it shouldn't have been a penalty. I mean, even even removing the ball, like the two balls, Yeah, isn't that ruining soccer? Because you're removing all physicality in the so game. Soft. You're not giving the defenders. Well, again, it's, it was because he was fouled a couple times before. Like he he got his he got his leg cut a couple times on the run in, and then yes, he got double teamed in the. Yeah, box but you called the call. You don't call the call because two times before he advantage got fouled. though. It would Does it that was mean advantage. Every single little touch is a penalty, just because it's a. Touch. And I mean, if it was an advantage, just a the ref would have back. signaled an advantage. Yeah, it's there's a lot of different things. I still think it was a soft penalty, but it was a penalty regardless. Unfortunately, and, and, he and, says wearing an England jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I'm just I wanted Denmark to win that game honestly, but yeah, 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 I'm just kidding. It was like Sterling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sterling jersey. No, no number. No, I but like I honestly like um, oh, okay. I can see the I can see your point, but it's just because like when I was watching the replay, I saw Sterling going down. He's a oh, he was. Player. I know how he plays. He's always searching for that. And, yep. and I hate it too. I, I'm so yeah. mad that it ended up costing the game for Denmark. But yeah, it but did. Is it a foul? Me. Yes. Is it a hard foul? No. Is it a soft one? Absolutely. <laughs> it, it, it did for me ruin the game, like the mood of the game, because it was yep. such a close game. Could go either way, and I was really exciting. And then something well. was the determining victory goal. That's for me. I get what you're saying. Right. Like but I think but I think if you look at that game collectively, Denmark started to lose their legs as the 65th minute, 70 minute game. So it looked like England were going to score. And I think that's just the, the build up of the pressure that led to that goal. But it's not the way you exactly. want Denmark to lose. And, Even- and Nick, this was the team I was alluding to. I was like, this is the surprise team. This is the team that... Um, yeah. But you said North Mass, but well, even my mom texted me and she's like, "I hate when they went on penalties, like yeah. like by yeah. that." Well, if kind it's of if penalty. it's a legitimate penalty, it's not as big of a deal to me. But that was, it was a soft penalty, and I agree with you guys. It, it's an ugly way to win a game, so I'm not denying that fact. And I, I want I want to make that very clear. It's a soft penalty, but yeah, I, it's a penalty. Like I agree with Irfan. Like I think he he said it perfectly. Like Denmark, I think at the 70th minute was looking to go to penalties. At that point, yeah, it was so early absolutely. They just lost steam. And you, I don't think someone can say Denmark outplayed England, especially near the end. So it's just the way that, it's just the way it happened. But yeah. we're in the final now, so we just kind of have to dismiss what's move happened. On. Move Absolutely. on. I agree. Move on. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the game's back on. I mean, we'll let you guys go and enjoy the rest of the game. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks <laughs> for it's always super fun having you guys on here. So we'll get you guys on again. Of- course hope i didn't upset you guys um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I actually he knows i actually like when people go against like because it's not fun if everyone agrees this is good for the viewership yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we all, agree. Um, well, before you guys go real quick who are you choosing to win well i still have money on italy winning it so <laughs> <All right. laughs> i kind of want to win money <laughs> kids say no to gambling <laughs> As we oh. promote Betting House over here at Crotch Door <laughs> Make sure you tune into Betting House this week. Later this week, they're going to give you their pick. Uh, I think it's going to stay stay as it, as it is, and England is going to take it. Cool. I don't see right. Well, enjoy the rest of the game, guys. Thanks again for, for coming on. We, we always uh, have a good time with you guys. So uh, Heads up to both of you. New season starting in a couple weeks. We'll have you back on for, for something in there. So wow. get ready for that. Sounds good. We love it. Thank you for having us, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Enjoy the second half. Thanks, guys. guys. When it goes, when Italy ties. (laughs) (laughs) So we'll have him on if Italy ties it and it goes to extra time, right? Is this how? We'll shoot you. We'll shoot you both. I'll shoot you a text. You guys will be coming on extra time. All right, boys, enjoy it. All right, take care. See you. I know we're back. Uh, Nick, did you want to take that that break, or you're good to keep going? No, we keep going, man. We're games right, on. We, we, don't, we don't take breaks in the middle of a game. Sorry, I just thought uh, well, we put it out there, but a uh, couple of plugs for the network. Follow and get a look at the main network show, Garage Door Sports. You can look at the betting house. We have a football show. We have Off the Mic with Kellen Forrest. Uh, obviously, touch on that. So if you're looking for a plethora of sports, uh, the network has you covered. Um, Don't forget 20 Minutes on Ice. Oh, that. my apologies. It's the off season. I kind of went blank. <laughs> 20 Minutes on Ice. Stanley Cup Finals just ended. Uh, tune in to see what Ryan and Nick have to say about uh, the draft and and what the Kraken, the Seattle Kraken, will do as a new expansion team. Yeah, them guys. 
them guys. Sorry, yeah, boys. Those ones. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dangerous free kick here. God, Pickford's hair. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the dangerous free kick. Hair. It's close. Oh, it's Sterling. What? What are you? What are you doing? Why is? Why is Sterling defending? He should not defend. <laughs> But now Sterling's like, much. that's not a foul, and it's like, okay. He's great going forward, because he ends up getting a lot of free kicks, and he can finish. <laughs> Defensive week. That was not far. That strike That strike was not far, but... Oh, so we're getting it's a miss? Gotcha. <laughs> a miss oh, it is. Oh, sorry. How far behind are you guys? Uh, they're setting up for their free kick. All right. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> How do I pause it? <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Keep going. Keep going. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm drinking. I'm still eating dinner over here. <laughs> I'm drinking What'd you have my, for dinner today? <laughs> I had a salad with, um, I don't know, just a bunch of veggies mixed in. And then I had an iced tea. Did you end up having, um, off the off complete soccer unrelated, did you end up having Thai food the other day? I did. Nice, I ordered nice. Pad Thai. I did. My dad just texted I was getting... me. <laughs> Get Sterling off, put Rashford on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted Southgate's you. Southgate's looking serious. No, 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 no. That's interrupting fine. our food conversation. How God, dare you? We were giving food suggestions. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Yeah, I did order pad thai. Moral of the story. What? Was it good? Would you go back? Because I know we were talking about... Is this a... It was okay. It was more like fast foodie than I wanted mm, it to be. Fair. Um, If I was, you know, if I was really hungry and it was an option, I would order it again. But if I want a nice meal... Sit Not down so meal. No. Just make it a, yeah. make make it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Which I prefer. But in living in a hotel, it's hard to make things yourself. That is true. That's a valid point. <laughs> yeah. So hotel I, with I got AC. I do have AC. That's the best. Uh, I was complaining, Nick, that most places in Europe don't have air conditioning. The only yeah. place you can get it is in a hotel room. So <laughs> yep. there you go. You're in a hotel room. Good thing. <laughs> So it looks like there was it. no changes for the Italians at the half, by the way. Uh, are you guys yeah. surprised by that or no? Not really. No. Uh, the only change was the the right back, maybe, but... I think we all kind of agreed that they're they're not playing badly. Uh, you know, it was yeah. just a... You know, they got scored on early, so... Have you noticed they've been, they've been aiming at Pickford's left side, so our right, when we watch. Is there... Is that, is that his weak side? Is that his... Is that, I, I don't know. Like, I haven't noticed that with Pickford this tournament because I don't I haven't seen anyone really shoot there but the Italians keep aiming in that in that lower lower corner there I think it might be his his weak side because that his he's left footed right so yeah going to your stronger leg is a lot harder to dive that way Mm -hmm. from my limit from my limited practice with keeping is Um, it really it is because you're so used to pushing off of your strong pushing foot. Pushing off your strong leg. Ah, as, opposed I never thought to, about that. as opposed to having to lift that one up to push off your weaker leg. So it, it's it's a minute difference, but maybe they've noticed something. Maybe they've watched enough film that it's like, hey, we need to go yeah. that way because he cannot yeah. get there. Even with their misses, they're like, that's that's the corner. Or that's the side that they're yeah. they're aiming on. That's Look, a, it's Mario's a good idea. I, did, I didn't even notice that, but I, I like you you picking that up there, Irfan. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I did some goalkeeping, shots, so yeah. for me, it's like, how do you how do you take away that that advantage? And that's yeah. oh, Italy's making a sub here, number sixteen. Just as I said it, eh? <laughs> no, they they need something, I guess. But like they're playing so well, it, it, they don't really deserve to be down one nil, but they are, you know. Hey, England capitalized, you know. They did, and that's the important part in a, in a, in a short run tournament that that that's, you have to do. Yeah. Is Italy making two subs? Italy's making two subs. Okay. So Immobile is coming off. Barella oh. came off for Christine. Cristante. Yeah. And Berardi Stay came off for Italian Immobile. Accent. Immobile. I'm surprised they took Immobile off, but I guess he hasn't been super impactful. He's been so. no. He's been invisible. Yeah. Which is not good. I mean, Insignia has probably been their best best player all game. Which he has been a lot this tournament. So. He has been a lot this tournament. Him and Chiesa have just looked very good. I mean, this there have been players that have come into this this Italian side that have found a way to take over. Yeah, yeah and you can tell Immobile is really upset with the way he played. So yeah. it's not a surprise. I mean, in the, in the final, you know, you want to play your best and give your best. And yeah. 
it, I would be disappointed too. Because he has done played, he has played well throughout the tournament, and they have played well collectively throughout the tournament. So. Absolutely, I agree with you one hundred percent. There, Paige. You, you know what I've appreciated, guys, from this tournament is when players come on and off, they have a conversation with the guy. You know, sometimes there's some teams that are like so disjointed that it's like a, a simple high five, let's go, keep going, and it's like to me that doesn't scream team. You're just doing it because of your talent. And wow, so that's a weak yellow card, in my opinion. It's on Sterling. It's a foul. It's like it is a foul. I think it's a foul. I think it's a foul regardless. But I think that's a weak card. Hey, man, no Maguire can't head the ball towards the net ever. Harry Maguire. Well, he scored a pretty pretty nice goal against Ukraine. On a, sure. on a shot. Harry Maguire. <laughs> I think it's just Paige not liking the left side of our, our defense here <laughs> with Maguire and Shaw. Yeah, it's really eating me alive here. That that's a United defense too, so you know. <laughs> it's extra hate. <laughs> Apparently the ref is having some uh, microphone issues. Did you notice that, mm-hmm. Paige? I didn't, no, actually. Yeah, before the free kick was taken. So you you're ahead, but he had some uh, he had some adjustment going on by the fourth official. <laughs> Sorry, I'm watching. I'm watching. Harry Maguire. <laughs> that's why. She, oh, that's why you said it. We're like, what do you allude? What are you talking about? <sighs> Guys, just I knew what she was. I knew what she was talking about. I was just part. waiting oh, to see how far. Hello. Was. Everything just goes over my head until you tell me after. <laughs> Her fun's lost. Be like, okay, there's a play. This is what happened. That's Gotta why I'm talking things. about it. If your screens were up to time, it would be fine. Listen. Maybe mine's more up to time because I'm in. You yeah, know, you're closer. That sure, that's what we're gonna blame it on. Well, no, but you're probably getting like a, a live feed, right? As opposed to us, yeah. it's going from from the people who are doing the broadcast <gasps> to TSN, and then they're streaming it to us because I'm watching yeah, on my they're computer. Connecting it to you. So yeah, well, the computer al- always has a little bit of lag. Too. Exactly. So I gotta go through two lags. Yeah. I don't know about you, Irfan. I don't know if you're watching it on TV or not, but no, I have the the stream on TV. Yeah. But I'm always behind everyone, so. Yeah, yeah you're, you were you're behind last bad. time too. <laughs> well, like, so it's weird. Like here in Ottawa, like our stream is ahead of my parents, and we have the same like system set up. So I was like, hmm, maybe Ottawa is better. I don't know. Are we closer? We're closer to yeah. the East Coast, I guess. Yes, closer but they're to. closer to the TSN building. Yeah. They are. I don't know. <laughs> I consider Spend getting together, TSN. TSN. I, I was considering getting TSN direct for the day, and I was like, it's eight bucks for the day for one game. Yeah, no, that's not that's not really worth it. That's my issue with one soccer too, because yeah. they they play all the national women's program. national team games on one soccer and the CPL. Yeah, and yeah, and, and CPL. But I mean, I for me, it's you know yeah. more to watch the national team, and right. I don't want to pay. I think it's like seven or eight bucks for for the game. Yeah, you know, I guess for it's one like you're, for one you're, day. Yeah, it's like you're going to a stadium to watch, but it's like yeah. the atmosphere doesn't replicate that. I don't want to drop money if I don't have to. Right. Yeah. And you know, you already pay for a hundred different subscriptions that it's like yeah. everything's subscription based now. I was trying to watch the Tour de France, and even that is subscription based now. You have to buy the cycle. Can't you watch that? Can't you watch that at the, the hotel? Like, is that on our TV? Yeah, when I was in Canada oh, though. Right, right. Yeah. So I have um I also have because our games are played on a network called Canal Plus. It's like a it's like um streaming service stream yeah but they they play like movies and stuff like that so they mm-hmm. have a sport package and that's where they play our games so i i have that so my family can watch the games but so it's on there as well but i want to i like to watch it in english because i don't know a lot about cycling and they explain a lot about the cycling and and the the not tournament the tour the tour yeah um and it was like nearly impossible to find I had to VPN to England and then connect through another network and sign up for another thing. And everything is subscription based. It's really frustrating, but. Yeah, no, my, uh, one of my classmates is a huge tour de France guy. I mean, him used to talk cycling all the time. So it was, it's when you get into it, it's just like, Oh, these guys are very cool. Yeah. (laughs) If you're, if you're kind of on the fringe and they don't, and you don't really know a whole lot about it. And you're just like, I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like, that's why I purposely watch it in English, so I know yeah. what what the heck is going on. Because mm-hmm. I mean, my my French is not that great, so especially when they get technical, and I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but you're I'm improving. 
right? You're improving a lot more than let's see me a couple months ago. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I am improving, but I need to improve a little quick. I'm going to be taking classes. Don't worry. There you go. I'll do it with you in the fall. I'll do it. I'll do it here and then we'll practice. Oh, that would be fun. Actually. We could speak an all French podcast. Yeah, well, well, we that'll were, be our goal. Let's do a French one one day. So we were number nine, and I, I remember I told paid this, uh, but we were number nine in Ivory Coast um, a couple months back in, in the sports category. So and they speak French, and they speak they French. Speak oh, French. It, it, it was the show that you were on, I believe, and I think I did your introduction in French. Yeah, and I think that's what I don't know. Got us I, through. I, don't, I don't know how they picked it up. Gotta love we'll the ability of the World Wide Web, eh? Things yeah. get everywhere nowadays. <laughs> instantly it's scary so so far england has done nothing in this second half <laughs> italy's had most of the possession actually yeah, but it, italy's had most of the possession the whole game though so you know what for the sake of the entertainment of the game i would love to see them score who italy italy yeah. i would really I think love italy- another england goal because that's part of my bet is that there is exactly two goals in the game mm-hmm so either Italy has to score and then it goes to kicks because then it doesn't count as another goal. Yeah. Or England needs to score another goal. Mm. See, I'd be afraid if England, eh, sorry, if Italy gets the goal. Yeah. And they're tied up. I think England might lose this game. Yeah. Mm. I also need two more cards. <laughs> well, guys, you, you got to teach me how to bet on these. Did you bet on the? Did you bet on the Copa America game? Because I think you would have gotten. I didn't. It, right? I didn't bet on the Copa America game because Bet Three Six Five has been doing all these like free twenty dollar bets. So basically, okay. you you do a bet builder on a specific game, mm-hmm. and you can do a twenty dollar bet on the game, and it you, you don't you're not actually charged anything because it was a free bet. Yeah. So like, I have a twenty dollar bet that will pay out thirty eight hundred dollars if I get it right. And but you have to get everything England. right. Yeah, but I got to get everything right. So I need England to lift the trophy. Okay. I need uh, Harry Kane to score any time in the match. So I needed. I need another England goal. Right. Over three cards. Under twenty six and a half free kicks. Exactly two goals and Raheem Sterling over two and a half shots. Okay. How Is you there one so on far? diving? Is there one on diving? <laughs> How am I doing so far? Oh, I also had Lorenzo and Signe over one and a half shots. So here, I already got that one. Mm-hmm. Everything else is still up in the air. So why is Pickford getting angry? I'm also Pickford mad that England shot. only has two shots, and one of them is from Shaw. Hey, he made a save on his left side. Yeah, but there's not as much push off there. That's why they're going that no. way. Yeah. Uh. England needs to take more shots. That's what we've established. That's yes. I think everyone has established that. But I think they're they're content with just running the ball out, running the ball, making making yeah. Italy. Yeah, I don't think they care. Yeah. Do we see an England substitution get some fresh legs? Um, yes. Just to run in. Absolutely. I think Mason Mount. I think Mason Mount might be the the next guy coming off. I don't know yeah, what you're. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Sterling comes off as well. He. I don't think he's done a whole lot this game, honestly. Hmm. But yeah, something with Southgate. Creating. But something with Southgate not wanting to take him off. No, but what he might do is he might pull him off in like the seventy fifth minute and be mm-hmm. like, "Hey, we're gonna throw Sancho and Rashford on for Mount and um, Sterling, and just say, boys, run into the corner." What do you guys make of Sancho in the last starting the last couple games or last game? Was I thought he looked good, game? but yeah, I thought he did fantastic. He's a he's a fantastic dribble dribbler yeah. of the game, ball. Yeah, like he's taking It'll on be defenders. a nice addition to the Red Devils. Well, I think you know the 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 news coming out saying that it compensates for Pasaka not being an attacking minded defender. At least you have Sancho who can yeah. take over that right side and super help for. Yeah, but. I agree. I'm I'm happy about it. It's good good decision for United. That's for sure. Which yeah. doesn't have a lot of money. Often. I'm I'm money. I am sad that he didn't get a lot of play time in this tournament because I think he has a lot of quality that. I don't know what Southgate did. He was coming in with a bit want. of a knock coming into the tournament, so that might mm-hmm. might have played a factor. But I don't think it should have played a factor as late into the tournament as it did. Yeah. But it, it's the it's the the belief I think if that's the right word that Southgate has for for Sterling, I think he right. Likes. He just trusts him more. I mean, Sterling plays well when 
puts on the England uniform. He just had a down year with City. Yeah. Well, I mean, and every man, I'm seeing praises opinion. and I don't like this. <laughs> You're like, it's eating me alive. Uh, it's like last week when I admitted that Frank DeBoer should not have been fired. And yeah. The biggest credit that hurt. <sighs> Poor Irfan. <laughs> hey, I, I'm not, I don't feel bad about admitting when I'm wrong, but man, it's happened. That one hurts. <laughs> you've just been, you've just been wrong a lot lately. <laughs> This Donorama thing, I, I'm I'm hoping for a tie or something so I can get away. Well, with let me check off. with the. Yeah, I'll the check the Twitter one. I stopped looking. <laughs> I stopped looking. It hurt too much. Well, it's it's fifty fifty on Twitter, which is We're sad 50/50 because that means it's, on... it's you and me, Irfan. Yes. Yeah, sh- <laughs> it's fifty fifty on uh, Instagram too. There you go. You're pulling a tie right now, sir. Listeners, Yay. go vote, please. Oh, fun fact. Mm. Tom Cruise is at the is at Wembley watching the game. Cool. That is In case a fun you fact. You were curious. That is a fun fact. That's a fun fact. Do we like fun Tom one. Cruise? That's a different question. It's not a fun fact. <laughs> That's a question. <laughs> That's a question. <laughs> oh no, guys. I'm going to guess Italy score. Just a hunch. Yeah, it's yeah. one. That's your goal. That's a huge goal for them. How far ahead are you? Jeez. It's a goal coming up. We have uh, reports from France that there's a goal coming up. A <laughs> uh, quick report from here in France. <laughs> there is a goal. Somebody scored. We don't know who, huh? but somebody has scored a goal <laughs> Oh, for the Italians. Uh, Paige, what minute are you on? I am at sixty six forty nine. Oh, yeah, so you're about so forty. That hasn't ahead. that hasn't updated. Where are you guys? Sixty six. At the goal. Oh, that's an awful Scrappy goal by goal. Pickford. What are you doing? He should have got that out the first time. Where's Henderson? Throw him in. Okay, serious question for you, Paige. Yeah, hit me. If all the keepers are healthy. For England. Who's the starting keeper? Henderson. Do you have Henderson as well? Okay, I, I have, have Henderson. Henderson. Yeah. Irfan was think... Pope. Okay, Pope had a good season too, though. Yeah. But for me, I think Henderson's been more consistent. Yeah. Mm. And, and knows I... better with the ball at his feet. Yes. And I think he's awful. Right now. <laughs> I think Henderson was the top pick until the injury. Well, no, Pickford was Southgate's top pick. Was he really? Pickford's mm-hmm. been that Southgate's top me. pick for a couple years now, since he took over oh, pretty much. How do you fan on that? And it's the side that Italy hasn't been shooting on. Sorry, I interrupted there. But... No, it's fine. I um, agree with you. It's not, it's not Hen- well played. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad goal for me. But I think, yeah, I think Henderson well finished. is the, yeah, well finished. I mean, that's an opportunist Why is goal, he right? It's there. <laughs> Why is he getting mad? It's his fault. <laughs> Oh, Sorry. why didn't you guys clear it after I missed the save? <laughs> well, I lost my bet there because Kane's not going to score and they're not going to keep it at exactly two goals. So I think, okay, oh. uh, let me know if you agree or disagree, but I think England's problem is the distribution. Like, they haven't been able to get the ball to Kane at all. Well, they're not, like, well, he's not too just deep today, here. but throughout the tournament. Just yeah. He's coming tournament. too deep. He's playing the way he plays with Spurs. He's coming to half because they're not getting the ball to him though yeah Yeah, he's not getting the ball regardless of where he is on the pitch so right he's a playmaker yeah i don't know i think i think the big thing for me is that today at least they can't control the ball at their feet like no one's been able to dribble with the ball for more than a step except for shaw but he's usually wide open Mm -hmm. on that left side because they're not really pressuring him as a as a wing back other so, than that, like the guys in the middle, the guys up front can't control the ball for more than two or three steps, and then they get it taken away, and now we're back on, we're back on the uh, defensive end. So it's a little disappointing to watch because you, you know that there's enough skill in the team to so to do. Okay, fun little fun little fact or a little note to make. What minute was this goal in? Sixty seventh. Sixty six. Sixty six. Okay, so. When England lost in the World Cup, there was oh, an no. early don't, goal. Don't pull this. I'm looking at the minutes here. So Trippier scored in the fifth minute. Shaw scored in the second. Perisic scored in the 68th minute. This goal's in the 66th, 67th minute. Um, 
It, ha- it has a lot to... It's coming home! <laughs> Irfan, shut it. We're not talking about that, okay? No, but the big thing for me is that Italy has had 71% of the possession and four shots on target. England has exactly one three shot years ago. Sorry. on target. Yeah. It's just not been good enough going forward from the English. They can't control the ball for more than a pass or two. They can't go for more than one or two steps. I know Paige is getting a little sleepy over there in France. No, so. I'm good. No, 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 I'm good, really. Um, yeah, it's only 10.30. I'm so good. <laughs> it was a long day, that's all. Yeah. But it's, but I'm not it's just not good game, enough. So. It's just not good enough right now. And here comes Sacco on, so I'm assuming Mount's coming out. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm. I'm yeah. I don't know. I'm guessing. No, no. It's going to be a change in formation. We're looking at Trippier or something. It is Trippier, actually. Oh, it is. Yep. Yeah. Oh, lucky guess. But so are they going to throw? Mount Mount goes know? in behind Kane. They're going with a three. Yeah. So there's some sort of that that thing that you're talking about getting a playmaker out there, getting something to. You know what? Honestly, I think the best formation would have been bringing Rashford on to play ahead. I of was Kane. just going to say Rashford. Throw Rashford right? on. But bring him, but put him ahead of Kane, right? Put him mm-hmm. as the high guy and have Kane um, come and receive like he's already doing. Yeah. yeah, I think that would have been better. But oh, I think that we're going to see a couple more changes, though. I I don't think he's going to have to do Southgate's going to have to do something because we don't have possession, we don't have offense. Yeah. We they don't have possession, they don't have offense. We're getting some comments in the chat. Uh, come on, Italy. I think I know yeah! who that might be. I think I know who that might be. But I cannot confirm. Can England mm-hmm. recover from this? Not the um, way they're playing. Well, no. <laughs> 71% possession for Italy. Can't do this. So do you play for overtime at this point? You gotta, you gotta make Italy work. Yeah, and they're not doing it. So I think no, you don't want to go to extra time because you're gonna be fresh. Right. It's it's basically the Spain Italy game flipped for the Italians. Yeah. 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 I think the big thing for England is that they have more guys on the bench that they could bring on. Oh my God, Pickford, that was an awful pass to Walker. Oh, get him out. Put John. Would you make a? Oh, you... they've got Henderson putting, uh, getting Put, ready for a team. putting his kit on. Oh, that's a little bit more pace on that pass, but yes. But I, I honestly bring Johnston in. Do a goalkeeper <sighs> change. Oh my god! I'm not sure Sorry. what that reaction was. If someone missed a shot, or if <laughs> no, Italy you, just scored. you guys will see, they mi- Italy missed a shot, but yeah. you'll, you'll see. <laughs> I wasn't sure if someone missed or Italy scored. Like that was, the, that was I don't the know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just it's a little awkward. You guys will see it. Well, you know awkward because really... it's Pickford or awkward because awkward because they just missed? <laughs> a little no, awkward because it's Pickford. Okay, just checking. Okay, so Declan Rice is coming off and they got Henderson coming yeah, off. Yeah, that makes that's what I was gonna say. I think it's yeah. Declan Rice having to come off. I don't think they're gonna take Phillips off. I think he's been one of the only guys who's been making tackles in that midfield area. Oh, that should be a goal. You see? You yeah. see the awkwardness? How did he not make contact with that ball at all? I don't know. And, and why is he, like, what's he getting mad at? He was yelling for an offside. Uh, okay, but still, be more... Do what you did in the Premier League. Go after the player. Pick him up. Why is he... Sw- did you see... Why was he swinging his arm like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah that, he does this or something. <laughs> like, what does that like do for you? That doesn't help you at all. Don't tackle him. Oh, God. We're just going to get play-by-play from Paige, folks, for the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Go for it. I was going to say, who? there's um, one player for Italy. I think it's uh, – I got. I forget his On name. On the bench? No. Um, wait. Ignore me for two moments. All right, Irfan. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, England just can't need to do something. Need to get some sort of control on the ball. Get Sterling off the pitch because all he's doing is fouling people now. He's leaning into people, dropping down like he can't hear you, dude. It's good if Hello? you turn to the mic and not put your sorry, head. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I was just saying, um, <clears throat> he's just dropping as if he's trying to pick up a penalty. He's not going to get it. 
No, is but he's the, knocking people over. All he's doing is fouling people and trying to get trying to get fouls called against him. It's not useful. Is this the same referee from the semis? I doubt it. From England semi? No. I doubt it. Let's pull out the packet and see. Yeah. I'll look it up. You keep talking. Yeah, I'm looking too. Oh, you're looking? Okay, I'll talk. Um, Chiesa. Paige, have you found this player that you were looking for? Yeah, yeah, number 14 for Italy. Chiesa? Yeah. He's been great. I really enjoy watching him play. Him for Juve this past year, I think he, him and Ronaldo were the only bright spots for otherwise poor Juve team. He's, I don't know. He just brings a lot of, like, um, energy. Yeah. Like, I remember my sister and I watching the game being like, wow, he, he was like, one of the better players on the field. Yeah, he's and he's he, been a key player for them this whole tournament. So Yeah. Yep. He scored a really good goal in... Um, the Belgian game? Yeah, the maybe Belgian it was the game? Belgian game. Yeah. yeah. Hell of a sweet okay, so. streak. I love, watch, I love watching him play. Like, even in... Even in league, like, he looks... He looks dynamic. My God, what was well, that's what I mean. He brings a lot of energy. Like, he's really, you know... It feels like England has a lead and they're just clearing the things Defending, right? Yeah. yeah. Th- that's what I mean. I think they're playing for the tie at this point. They have no idea what to do going forward right now. Like, they look lost every time that they start going forward. Throw Rashford on. No, but the problem is it doesn't matter. They can't get the ball from the back line to the f- attacking right. line at the moment. Like, <laughs> they can't there's get just the ball nothing. at all. <laughs> there's nothing. They can't do anything. They can't put two passes together because no one's moving. As soon as they get the ball, everyone freezes. It's not it's not conducive to attacking football, Erfan. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we you did mention before so they official. play. <laughs> yeah, I'm agreeing with you. That was so um, <laughs> politically correct. <laughs> I am in agreement with you. We will continue this conversation. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, Paige, I cut you off there. But no, no. Um, I don't even remember what I was going to say. All Probably right. wasn't that important. <laughs> We'll come back to it. When, it. when it comes up again, I'll just say it. Yeah, I don't know. I just I think England needs to find some sort of ability to move off the ball, and no one seems to be doing it. Again, outside of... I thought Shaw and Trippier were the only two that were actually moving off the ball and getting up and down the pitch. And now Trippier's off, so you just took one of the guys who was moving up and down the pitch off of the pitch. Yeah, and freaking Maguire thinks he can dribble through 12 people, so... Well, because no one's moving. He has no one to play the yeah. ball to. Oh, but look, you want guys. McGuire dribbling up the field? Absolutely not. But no, he has no one to pass to. So oh, he has I'm to. agreeing with you. I am in agreement. Yeah. We can like he has to. That's the problem. <laughs> you don't want it. But unfortunately, with no one else going anywhere, you have to do that. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost them. Because he's going to try to make a move up. He's going to get tackled. And they're going to go on a counterattack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But look at it when England has the ball, no one moves. Like mm-hmm. who's nobody? The too? There's no outlet. Now, no, mm-hmm. don't go back to the pick. There we go. That's good. Don't go back to Pickford. Don't don't don't, yeah, don't, don't ever go back to Pickford. Direction. Don't ever go back to Pickford. Unless you're winning 10 0. No, go don't ever go back to Pickford. Don't ever go back to Pickford. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I would much rather one. No, of the change other the pl- like. What's one that there was a coach a few years ago that just refused to play back to the keeper ever? I, have I don't no remember. Idea who you're was... talking about. That's a foul. Oh, My coach that... in university every now and then told us not to play back to the keeper. <laughs> was your keeper not good with the ball? Um, really good at shot stopping. Not great with her feet. Hmm. Yeah, I played with a few of those. And if you're listening you're and you know with... who you are, I apologize. But I mean, <laughs> love you. If but you're, <laughs> if you're playing a sweeper system, I mean, then you don't need to go back to your. Yes, you do. But... You still do. Yeah, but you're 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 not going to use it as often. Uh, no, I guess. But yeah. like, I don't know. Like our team, we played with a sweeper, hmm. and, and we went back to Kieran all the time because he saw he the had ball, the right? no, but he had the full field at that point, right? He could see everything. He's not worried about the players in front of him because he's literally by himself back there. So it made sense to go back. It makes sense to go back to the keeper when the keeper does that. Pickford's not a keeper that can do that. Right, Paige? Like it just it 
comes down to the mentality of the keeper themselves. It also depends how, you know, comfortable, confident they are with their feet in terms of like, are they able to take the ball, control it, relax, make a pass, or are they just going to freak out? What? Keys, his whole body broke. Look. In that tackle? Yeah, it broke. <laughs> it broke. He's, He's a fish. He cracked. <laughs> bones no more. He fell. No, yeah, no bones. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He just fell. <laughs> I, I know I was being sarcastic. Oh, okay. I was like, what are you talking about? Like... <laughs> I'm waiting to see some big injury. <laughs> There's nothing there. Oh, that's that the point. There is no big injury. <laughs> He's By got the no way, bones. He's fish. If mm. you really want to, but I was, uh, I had to move my brother in on Tuesday to his new place, and he lives just outside of Little Italy, and we had to drive through Little Italy all day on Tuesday when in, when Italy was playing. Holy crap! I can't imagine what it is like down there right now in downtown Toronto. <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like in Italy right now. Well, that's yeah, it's a whole different issue. I'm not talking mm. about it. I'm talking about in Canada. Well, so my, my cousin lives in, in Birmingham right now or around there. And even there, she's like, it's so hard to get through. Like yeah. I was talking to my aunt. It's like, she's like trying to get place to place. Um, and she has to try and dodge people. Oh, yeah. Like it's busy. Oh, yeah. It's, it's got to be crazy. Like we haven't experienced this earth on being, you know, Canadian and stuck yeah. here. Maybe hockey. The closest thing we get is hockey. World Cup. Well, I mean, the closest thing could be the, the Raptors championship where it was like yep. hella busy, right? Yeah, that was a big one. I celebrated that one. I'll admit that. That was fun. I wasn't downtown Toronto, but no, I was but downtown everywhere, Mississauga. I was busy. That was crazy. Yo, Mississauga is just as busy as Toronto these days. What is what is Sterling complaining about? Like, you're not doing anything. You don't get the, the ability to yell at your teammates until you do something productive. I'm sorry. I'm being a stickler about this, but I I firmly believe that until you do something productive, you are not allowed to yell at your own teammates for not being productive. Pickford, number two. What? No, Pickford does the same thing. Oh, okay. He, sorry. I was like, eh. keepers That's like a little my bit biggest different. pet peeve, though. That's my biggest I, pet peeve as a player. Like, if you're going to scream at me for not running you better be running your freaking ass off because then i'm like yep i got it you're working hard yeah no i problem. get well, i see what you see i'm not doing yeah. it i will do it now Bernadeski. like you better be working twice as hard as anybody on the field if you're gonna open your mouth and say something yeah i agree we got another we got a hi from uh will the best 51 is good hi will hi will welcome, welcome to the show Hope you're enjoying the game. Let us know who you think is going to win. Obviously, we know Gosby was is cheering for Italy. <laughs> Italy. Forza Italy. Forza Azzurri. Forza. Yeah, no. Go three lines. <laughs> go three lines. Grab a beer. Right, Will beer. says it's coming to Rome. <laughs> Very creative. I love that. That's fantastic. Shout out to Will. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Where's the button? Sorry. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> we'll get the soundboard working next time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have one. I forgot. Sorry. It's not set up. No, but I know you have one. We need to borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time Irfan's home, I'll set it up for him and he can take it with him. Awesome. All we need is pew, pew, pew. <laughs> that's it. That's all we need. <laughs> well, it's over, the and over and over and over and over and <laughs> over. Yeah. But it's recorded with, with Paige's voice. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> so it's even more special. <laughs> yes. And then we got to get a manifest. A manifest. Yeah, manifest. 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 Yeah. Uh, Nick, did you know that uh, one of the shows on the network is officially a clairvoyant? We predict futures and <laughs> and put everything into existence except for the fact that you got the game last night wrong yeah but i didn't do it on touchline thoughts that's the there difference you go. i did it without my partner wow all right we're gonna do that sure <laughs> another yellow card i got my three cards there it's getting pretty scrappy out there right now actually 
Because I think both clubs are, oh, wait, uh, both sides cards. are. Ex- Never mind. I need another uh, card. One more card. <laughs> <clears throat> I think both sides want free kicks or something. And no, both just... sides want to win. <laughs> I think they're, but I think they're trying to win it on a set piece at this point. Yeah. Well, England definitely is. Italy has a little bit more creativity. Oh, right my boy's coming out. Your boy. He got a little injured. Number oh, 14. Chiesa. Yeah. I think after that knock, oh, I think he's crying. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> we like you anyway. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's coming out. And it's uh, Bernadeschi on. coming on. Number 20. On. Yeah. Bernadeschi, another yeah. UVA player. Who's the, who's the player of the tournament as we, we get closer to full time? Is it 14 coming up? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. The uh, TSN thing has it as Insigne coming out. Maybe they mixed up the yellow card and the, the sub. Yeah, already. probably. Um, player of the tournament. That's a good question. Of the tournament? I don't have an answer for that question. Um, Yeah, I don't know a player of the tournament. I will Christian say some players Erickson. like... Yeah, Christian Eriksen. They For should, really. everybody together. Um, yeah. <clears throat> who's your player of the tournament? Do you have one? Yeah, I'd go either of these keepers. I think Jan Somer for Switzerland. He was so good, and I think Casper Schmeichel. I was just gonna say that I I think yeah. the the goalkeepers have been fantastic this tournament. Yeah. And I mean Jordan Pickford's gonna win the the Golden Glove for most clean sheets. I think, but no, best goalkeeper performance. I think it's fewest goals conceded, but. Oh, I thought it was the most clean sheets. No, gold Golden Glove. I think is the the fewest oh. goals conceded. I believe is oh. what it technically is. But well, technically um, there are two. Yes, we got Will is saying Bonucci mm. as the player of the tournament. He also is wondering: Do you guys think it's going to penalties? I hope not. <laughs> I do too. I got at another show rate, tonight. But at this rate, it's going to penalties. So I oh, think we got a pitch invader. The- I, I think out of the, the two teams to score, the most likely to score to avoid penalties, it's Italy, obviously. Yeah. Um, it's because they but, can, you know, possess the ball. Yeah. I think I think if you're going to a penalty, as both fans, you're afraid. And I, I mean, I keep thinking, you know. I, Italy's uh, Maria, not scared, Maria, though. Italy's not no, scared, Ma- though, because Donnarumma's good at, good at kicks. Reading, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not, I think, I'm not like, saying Pickford's necessarily bad. I haven't really seen Pickford in a in a shootout personally. So I can't I can't say whether or not he'll be good in a shootout. All I know is Donnarumma is good in a shootout. Right. Mm-hmm. So very very similar to Buffon early in his career. Back to my point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not denying that he's going to be a good keeper. No, I, was, I know. Not the point I, that I was trying to make. No, I know what point you're making. I just that's that's where I'm thinking. But it's gonna be very hard to to displace one of the best keepers of all time. Yeah. Uh, they got the pitch invader off. So, is that what it was? Yeah. So stupid. I saw security running on. That's the only reason I I noticed it because they did a good job not showing the pitch invader, which is part of broadcasting. Right. A lot of yeah, but that it. it makes me like I I know this was already talked about before. Blah blah blah. They won't show a pitch invader, but they'll show a man having a heart attack on the field. Mm. Yep, and we've we've talked about it, and yeah, the problem I know it's been is, up, but yeah, the problem is, is that, and I'm going off of what I know from broadcasting, so my my mm-hmm. information might not be a hundred percent here, but they have to keep the broadcast going for that to make sure if he's okay or not. Mm-hmm. I agree I, they I, shouldn't. I, I agree they shouldn't be showing him personally, but they have to show something so that you get a lot of facial expressions from fans. You get you get the players' reactions, and unfortunately all the players were standing over there by him, so a lot of the shots had Erickson in the background, and I wasn't okay with that. I actually thought TSN did a good job in not showing Erickson on the ground very often. They did a good job showing more of the players' reactions and trying to isolate so that you couldn't see Erickson. But overall, I heard a lot of people were saying that they were showing them doing chest compressions on on broadcast. I don't know if... I don't remember seeing that on the TSN one. I, might have I don't it. know where I watched it, but yeah, I might have missed that. Them doing compressions, yeah, and I didn't see that. So I agree for the sake of 
people knowing that he's okay. Like I was saying to Irfan after that, they show a picture of him in the, like on a gurney and his yeah. hand is like this. I think that picture is very important. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's a alive and awake, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, before that, I don't think it's necessary. Yes. Okay. Pan out to the, the fans and yeah. those things. I don't care if like, you go they'll, full they'll do scenic. it for a pitch invader. Yeah. Go full scenic and just have the commentators, you know, fill the void. Right. Yeah. And I agree with but, that. And I think, I think that's where they missed it a little bit Paige. And I'll, I'll agree with you there is that, um, it's, it's so hard at the moment because you also have to imagine these are people in the truck making these decisions, right? Right. And all mm -hmm. they want, they want a camera on it. So they know what's happening. What's but happening sometimes they forget yeah. that they need to ask for something else so that they can put something else on the broadcast. And it is incredibly difficult. I've been in that situation and we were told we weren't allowed to have it on camera. Now, well, I and it's a split university. second decision. Like it, yeah. you're never prepared for that as yeah. a, as a broadcaster or whatever, you know, now I was doing being, university sports too. That. It was a little bit right. different, right? So we weren't allowed to show anything. So as soon as a player got hurt, we either had to cut to commercial or we had to show the other we had to show the benches right something else yeah we weren't elite, we didn't even we weren't even allowed to have a camera on the player right so it was it was really tough in those moments to be like okay guys i know you want to look at it but find me something else find me another player right. find me the goalie find me something because that's not your first instinct like everyone wants to know what's happening so your first instinct as a <laughs> camera person is let me put my camera there because I want to see. I think Irfan, you said it perfectly. You're like, it's like that car crash situation. You know, yeah, you yeah. see a car crash and everybody's like, ooh, from like and you're like, the there's other nothing side of the road. That's stopping this side. The side that needs yeah. to be stopped is stopped. Don't stop the other side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree so, with you there. Yeah. But I get it. I mean, everybody's human and, and it's curiosity. Exactly. It's just so tough. And, it is so tough. And uh, as a broadcast, as, as, as someone who's been through those kind of situations, it's like you don't want to be the guy who's focused on the injury as the cameraman. But you yep. still want to know what happens. And you want to know exactly, and and I, it's more out of in that particular situation. It's more out of, you know, hope and prayers that he's okay. Not yes. so much. Oh, I want to know, like being nosy versus like the field invader. It's just like stupid. They just want their camera time, and I think that's why they are more yeah. particular about not showing the field invaders because well, they're doing the it for the camera. It's also the fact that the camera people don't care. <laughs> yeah they could true, care less about a pitch invader but a player on the field who's gone down injured they're like oh we kind of want to know what happened here of course and of it's, course. it's a lot so i ha, showing compressions no i'm against that 100 percent. but i was really disappointed with people attacking the production teams like they were doing something horribly wrong showing facial expressions and stuff like that and i'm just they're like, humans okay, what can you do that's like... a lot guys like you need to understand what's happening before you start ripping on stuff like that so I mean, it's opinion. a good lesson at the end of the day. And I'm sure, you know, something like that will be used to, to teach people what to do yeah. in those situations. Absolutely. Whether like you're a good example for broadcasting. Or, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just imagine, just imagine you're at a game where a player has a serious injury. Like I know we've had, we had one, I've told you about it many times. Um, yeah. Growing up, we had a kid break both of his legs in a match <laughs> and it was, oh my God, it was one of the scariest moments of my life. And I was on the bench on the far side of the pitch and the sound was Ugh. deafening. Yeah. And no one knew what to do. Again, you're only human, you know, yeah, you're not necessarily exactly. built to deal with those situations. So, cause it's, so, it's not especially supposed at to 14. happen. Yeah. yeah. Especially at 14. Exactly. Yeah, that was, it was, well, we've got, Six minutes of extra time here just to keep everybody up to date. No, nah, we're the game secondary at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got more important conversations. <laughs> yeah. But no, I agree. You know, at the end of the day, like we've said, everybody's human and, you know, you're not necessarily equipped to deal with those situations until it comes around. So I got a question for you guys. I'm noticing this uh, a little bit more in the England formation. It looks like since Henderson's been on, he's playing really high. It looks like they're playing two attacking mids with him and Mount behind Kane. Yeah. Is that odd to you? I don't think so in this situation because they want to win, right? Right, so but I mean throw... the fact that they brought Henderson on to play that role. I That I think is odd. Because... He's done it a few times, though. 
this season I'll or for that. Liverpool. Jesus you have Christ. Grealish on the bench. Yeah. Yeah, but Southgate has been so reluctant to put Grealish on at any point. Okay, then you have Rashford. You have Sancho. You have these guys. <laughs> Again, when has he put Rashford in? When has he put Sancho in? When has he put Grealish in? I don't get it either. Well, like, I love Henderson. Stuff. Don't get me wrong, but he's more of a defensive mid to me than an attacking mid. Or just a flat. CM. Yeah, he's a, he's a flat mid for sure. But I'm saying, like, yeah. if I'm gonna pick one or the other, attacking or defensive, I would push him more towards a defensive side because I think he has the ability to tackle really well and distribute the ball. Yeah, and that's not what you need as an attacking mid. Well, do you now? T- do you look at Mason Mouth being the next guy, and you go and, and put Grealish because I think they need they need that pass, they need that playmaker, and that's what he's. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the game, guys. <laughs> Ooh, and that's then a P- Pickford just gives the ball away. Oh, you're gonna get another card here, Nick. Don't worry. It doesn't matter because I needed Kane to score, and it uh, needed okay. to be exactly two goals. So it's all good. Uh, we get some more comments from Will. He's he's uh, all over our chat right now, so I'll, I'll read them out. Um, he says, "If it goes to penalties, it will be interesting." He agrees with us um, on the. Uh, humans are human conversation. <laughs> our Thanks, humanity. Will. <laughs> also, he says Italy will get a goal on the counter. Interesting. Which is weird the because counter. they have possession. <laughs> yeah. But if you see that the only person tracking back, especially with Henderson pushing forward, is Saka. it's Calvin. It's Saka or Calvin Phillips. <laughs> Phillips, back oh, forward, Phillips right? is all over. Chiellini, come on. I just got to the foul. Chiellini, you can't be doing that. You know, Chiellini looks like that uncle when you play pickup soccer that that knows the game so well. <laughs> that but would require my also... uncles to play soccer. Oh no! See, well, I have my uncles who like what they do is it's either you or the ball, so they'll hit you first if they can't get to the ball. That is a vicious pull, by the way. That that's like borderline red, in my opinion, Paige. I don't know about you. I don't know. Just because of how vicious red. he pulled back, I think he's trying not to smile. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. Just the, the the actual pullback was so vicious. It's like borderline red. I think it's only a yellow, but it's borderline. It's getting there. For me, that's a yellow. I'm not giving a red for that any day. Phillips, what was that? We are officially going to extra time. No, we're not. We're not there yet. <laughs> now we are. In the rest of the world, we're officially going to now extra we are. Time. <laughs> extra time. Wow. A question for Will. Who's been the best player of the game for you so far? Player of the game. Oh. Well, let's let's answer that while we wait for Will's response. I we mean, did, for yeah. Me, for me, it was Chiesa before yeah. he went out. I think he was fantastic. Um, on the English side, it has to be Shaw. And not mm. just because he scored, but because of what he's done on both sides of the ball. I know you're not going to like that page, but uh, he has no, been the best I, player yeah. for England. I, I will... Echo that with Shaw. I think he's been the only one that's looked like he might know what to do with the ball at his feet, unfortunately. Um, and then the Italians, I think Insignia has been um, one of the better players for them. And I think he's been active. He's he's trying to find lanes. He's trying to find passes. I think he's been... And, and Chiesa as well. And I think the two of them are such a good dynamic that they, they, they attack similarly. They understand the game similarly. And they're about the same height. So they're everywhere. So I'll pick the other guy the logic behind that <laughs> that's how i'm justifying it in my head <laughs> page that's a great question i don't have one right now come back to her yeah L- sounds good. let me yeah let me i get the shaw argument i do i can't sit with it right now <laughs> you know we're <laughs> right let me soak it you know in. we're right <laughs> let me soak it in a little it. bit <laughs> Um, I'm not going to admit nothing. <laughs> Will says Donnarumma. Okay. His ability to, to spread the play out. I mean, he's, he's finding that, 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 that you question this, Nick, where it's like, why is he not taking the goal kicks? But the minute he gets the, the, the pass, he's, he's, he's gunning. He's finding players. Yep. Um, he also hasn't been bothered as much. So He I, also ended up taking his own goal kicks after I said that. So Yeah. I think Maybe he it was you. just a play. Just to try and draw the the scheme for out. yeah yeah okay George just texted me he goes is it going to pens question mark we've well, only we asked said that question have like on. three times on the broadcast George thanks for joining us my friend <laughs> <laughs> well we told we told George we'd have him on if you if they want to hop on for this we can but uh, while we do that why don't we take a quick little break Nick um, okay. 
our production man. We'll, we'll, we'll let him, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, please uh, come back, go pee, go drink some water, go get something to eat. When we come back, extra time. Hey guys, it's producer Jake here from Benning House, the Garage Door Sports Network's ultimate degenerate gambling podcast. Catch our episodes weekly on Apple, Spotify, and Google as we bring you banter, laughter, and of course, picks for all sorts of games throughout the week. Give us a follow on our socials at Betting House Pod, where you can catch all our bets each week, as well as some bonus content. Remember to always gamble responsibly. Let's get rich. Good day, everybody. This is Ryan from 20 Minutes on Ice. Join me and my co-host Nick McVicker for opinions and analysis on the week that was in the hockey world. New episodes available every Tuesday, wherever you download your favorite podcasts from. 20 Minutes on Ice, part of the Garage Door Sports Network. Come join me, Kellen Forrest, on the On The Mic college basketball podcast powered by the Garage Door Sports Network, where we talk everything from my disdain for Duke basketball to my love for Kentucky and John Calipari and everything in between. Check us out under the Shows tab at garagedoorsports.com and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, I'm Gabe Ferraro. And I'm Logan Lockhart from Between the Uprights on the Garage Door Sports Network. We cover everything football from NFL, CFL, and all off-season storylines. We make our weekly picks during the season and cover every headline in the off-season. Check us out on the Shows tab at garagedoorsports.com for our weekly episodes. Are you looking for a weekly sports talk show where you get all the latest news, all the latest opinions, and of course, great analysis? You've come to the right place. Garage Door Sports is the show for you. Hosted by myself, Nick McVicker, as well as Irfan Manji and Kyle Vardy, we bring you everything you need to know from the week in sports. Tune in every Saturday as we go live on Twitch, as well as find us on your favorite podcatcher every week. We are back from our two-minute break. I I hope you got something to eat, something to drink, hydrate, get get some energy into it because um, we have thirty minutes left plus question mark on penalty kicks, um, which no one wants to see. Actually, that's not true. I'm sure somebody I, wants to see it, but I really don't. I hate when a game has to be decided on a kick, and and then you see a guy like David Beckham step up and blow it over the bar. Yeah. You know, you talk about moments that you remember. Those are those are up there, and I'm, I'm sure he remembers them as well. Yeah, but the thing is, like, he has he has so many memories on both sides, right? Like, yeah, the 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 free kick versus Greece. Oof. Like you don't forget that, and no. then you have this, you have that moment where he blew the ball so far over the bar. So there was a question that that I kept seeing on Instagram and Twitter, where and then Will, if you want to hop on this one, and um, who's the other? Our, our other guest that was uh, commenting, uh, Gost underscore B and Gost. If you want to, you want to comment on this one in their prime, would you take Andrea Pirlo on a free kick or would you take David, David Beckham on a free kick? How far out? Let's say 40 yards. Neither. Okay. Let's say 30 yards. <laughs> Beckham. It was, just, it was curious that people were saying, well, Pirlo this and Beckham this. And I was like, I don't think I'd want either of them stepping in unless I want them to cross them all in. No, I would take I would take Beckham from 30 yards out and I would take Pirlo from anywhere inside of 20 or mm-hmm. 25. Yeah. Uh, Will's asking, who do you reckon man of the match? Recommend for what? Sorry. Who, who do you reckon will be man of the match? Oh, man of the match. Um as we bring Paige back in after her break. Had to uh. fill up had to fill my water. I have fitness <laughs> testing tomorrow. Stay hydrated, folks. Well, <laughs> this is your cue. So so the guy who, who ends up getting man in the match, is that based on being do they think about the rest of the tournament or are they just focusing solely on the game? 
man of sometimes the match I, is the man of no, this no, no, match. No, 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 no. But no, I understand that. But like, you know how sometimes when they when they make the call, they kind of go, "Well, Loki's been the better player all tournament, and that's why he gets the edge." When you're trying to decide between one or two players, no, it's it's the, they usually just do it match based. Bit of a high foot there from uh, Berardi. Just He's like, I didn't do it. Oh, so you don't like it when when somebody else uh, pretends something hit them in the head, even though he didn't get hit. No, it's the ball. No, it was uh, Berardi's hand hit him in the in the head, mm-hmm. not the foot. Not the foot. Um, um, man of the match. Yeah, man of the match. Page, man of the match. Mm. I. <sighs> I don't know. I'd love to say Donnarumma, but he hasn't had to do much this game. Like for me, he's more, you know, man of the tournament or something like that. You know. By the way, we missed, sorry, I just want to keep everyone up to date. We did miss a substitution and Signe came off for Belotti. So. Yep. But um, I, I don't know. I mean, for, we kind of mentioned it before. For me, Phillips has been fantastic. I mean, he hasn't made a huge, let's say, you know, game changing impact, but he's been all over the field. He's covering yeah. a lot of grounds. He's making great tackles. He's, he you know, distributing. Yeah. And yeah. So um, I would put him in the mix. If England win. If England win. Yeah. I mean, if Italy win, Benucci I don't know. Nobody's been. The, Benucci probably is man of the match if, if Italy win or Donnarumma. Although yeah. Donnarumma hasn't really been challenged. So I don't know if you can. Well, that's what I mean. He, he hasn't d- had to do much, you know, yeah. for, sh- for sure. Throughout the tournament, you know, last game, he was man of the match for sh- in my books. Yeah. No problem. But do you know who I haven't really game? noticed for Italy? And it might be a good thing, might be a bad thing, is Jorginho. Like, he hasn't made a whole lot of mistakes in that midfield, which is something that can happen. As a as a center midfield player, you you can get caught in certain situations. I haven't really noticed that, and obviously England can't control the ball, so I'm sure he's getting in on a few tackles as well. So I'm thinking he probably has had a pretty decent match as well, but we just didn't mm-hmm. notice it. No, he's been under the radar. Very tidy. Well, that's what though. I mean. Very tidy. No, yeah, nobody's been like absolutely outstanding this game. Well, I mean, Insignia, I think before he came off, he probably was the only one. You know, he looked dangerous. Um, so maybe give him for his his effort. I don't know. <laughs> Gold star for effort. <laughs> uh, participation we, ribbon. <laughs> we don't give participation ribbons here. <laughs> You're right. Y'all Roy Keane would love it. you. <laughs> Roy Keane. Roy Keane hates everything. His call. I love. What, I just read the little blurbs they put on like Twitter and stuff. It's totally out of context, and I love it. <laughs> Oh, we're making another sub here. Verratti is coming off. Interesting. Who? Verratti, Marco Verratti. Oh, Verratti. I heard more Ratti. I'm like, uh... No, Verratti. I, I really hope... I don't um, think there's a more Ratti on the pitch. <laughs> I do hope uh, Marco Verratti has a good season with PSG coming up. Um, he's been struggling with injuries and playtime. But... How loaded is PSG going to be this season? Oh, my God. Yeah, they'll still lose in the quarterfinals. <laughs> After right. they, didn't even win, they didn't even win their league this year. Fair. <laughs> and they were loaded in that. Leo well. won. <laughs> but they like PSG's loaded in that league. Like no one should be anywhere close to them. And they didn't even win I the think, league. <laughs> I don't think they care enough about the league. I think they're trying to win the Champions League and they're just not working for them. It doesn't matter. They didn't win that either. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but I like I don't I hate teams that like tout themselves as one of the best in the world and they can't even win their own league. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but the additions of Donnarumma and the addition, uh, additions of Ramos will we'll solidify them a little bit. That was a good strike oh, by Phillips. Good, I know he just yeah. missed it. but He's been taking strike. a lot of shots this tournament, eh? They're trying to, trying to get behind a lot of them. Well, he's got the leg to take the shots from outside the box, which is the reason that he's not in the box on corners. Hmm. You just wish he hit the net a little bit more. Yep. I love the fan reaction shots, by the way. They make me so happy. <laughs> there's one of um there's one of this lady that's just like praying the whole time. And then the husband taps her on the shoulder, or whoever it was was like, look, and she's like, <laughs> I'm not praying. <laughs> they're I think they're gonna put Grealish in. He looks like he's putting his uniform on. A little late, but 
Okay, does Grealish make his move to City this this um after the tournament's over? Is this is it no. gonna happen? Are they more likely to get Harry? Oh Kane my gosh, search? they just showed a fan. Sorry to interrupt. No. They just no, showed no. a fan and she had an England jersey and it said Miss Grealish on the back and 69 was the number. All right. It's like um, it's like the 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 Tyler Sagan thing a couple of years ago where the fan did something similar to that and he's like, oh sorry, yeah. boy, yeah, oh boy, the two young girls, yeah. Well, not sorry, young. They were about his age. Yeah, they were like mid twenties, but young in the context of you know people living to what, 80, 90. Right. Yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> would have been bad if they were really young. That would have been questionable. Oh, Mrs. Grealish. That's the. You guys see it now? No, I saw it. Yeah, sorry. Was it like a United sort of that zebra was a United jersey kit? Oh, was it a United kit? That was a United kit. He's not. I didn't know what it was. It just. It was a zebra was a kit. See, ugly zebra kit. Ugly. Why would you put that on a United kit? Well, he was oh, rumored. He we was got rumored, Mason Mount coming off. He was rumored to be going to United at one point too. Hmm. Grealish in for Mount. Good. Good call. Good call. Late, but good call. And if Foden was healthy, it would have been Foden instead of Grealish. Because I feel like that man for would sure. never, If Foden never was healthy, he's probably starting over Mount. Probably. You know, Southgate's list is like the starting 11, then the ones that he put in the stands, and then Grealish, Sancho, <laughs> like Rashford... No, I would say it's the starting eleven. Then you have uh, uh, Saka yeah. is the next guy on the list. Henderson's up there. Mm-hmm. Grealish is part of that next group, but he'll never start. No, but he's part of that next group. He comes off the bench okay. consistently. That's fair. Yeah, he gets he gets minutes off the bench. Then it's the rest of the goalkeepers, the rest of the defenders. Then it's uh, Sancho. <laughs> about eight more players and then Rashford and yeah. those eight players aren't even in the roster no they're they're the the extras they're the they're what the uh hockey pundits call the black aces the guys who train with the team but never yeah. are allowed to be on the bench do yeah. we know how healthy Marcus Rashford is though he's healthy enough to play I mean, the one game that he got into he looked okay well, he's considering some sort of surgery in the off season, so. But he was healthy. Uh, he looked good in the game that he played, right? He did. He did. I just. So, I uh, Will would, Will has a question for you, United people. <laughs> Which one of us? All, All of, of us. us. <laughs> um, are you happy about the Sancho to United? I think we Absolutely. alluded to. It. <laughs> I believe that's a yes. Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great decision. How does this? How does the lineup look though? Well, you got to decide between Greenwood or or, or Sancho, I guess. Whatever it's hot. Well, oh, Marcel on the left though. No, but they're they're to, what they're talking about is they're they're looking to push Rashford on the left, Cavani up the middle. So then you have right. one spot left for Martial, Sancho, and Greenwood. Can we flip one of? Can we flip? Okay, I know I don't like saying this, but can we flip Martial for somebody in the midfield or? Someone in the defensive zone, or like you know what I mean, like flip them and maybe like five I think million. Martial was that great last season. Last you know? year, no, but he's yeah. ha- he has the ability to be really good. And we've no, seen I think he's a great seasons. player. I don't think last season he had a fantastic no, he, season. He had a, he had a rough year for sure. Yeah, and he always looks miserable. Like smile, come on. But that's just that's just how he looks in general, yeah. right? So. But it's football. It's supposed to be fun. He walks around like he's got a gun to his head to play the game. Come on. I don't know. I, mean, I just he think could... I'm looking at it, and it's there's almost too many attacking options, and that midfield just isn't strong enough for me just yet. Well, I like how United's linked to Kamavinga of um, Ren. He's he's a player for the future. So I mean, if you're looking for someone short term or unless sorry long term, and you could sell Martial to fund that if you wanted. Yeah, of course, but. Are they going to do that? But you know, I think with Ali, he wants he wants some sort of options going forward because there's times in the season where offensively we look dry. Plus, because the midfield wasn't doing anything either. No, and and I mean, I think Bruno 
has played 93% of the game since he's come back. He hasn't looked sharp. I mean, having somebody that can come in and, and play his role for a little bit and and give him that break or give him well, Pogba, Pogba some break. Honestly, Pogba and Fernandez can't play together. And Paige, I don't yeah. know if you agree with that. Pogba and Fernandez just do not mesh well on the field. They, no, they were... I, I don't agree. I also don't disagree. I mean, I yeah. think Pogba hasn't played super great last season that you I agree with either. that as well. <laughs> yeah. So I think... He, if you can find a way, oh my god, what is this save? You is guys, Pickford making it. awkward saves again. Yes, he just like throws his arm at it. It's ridiculous. He's practicing martial arts while he's saving the ball with the it's air. Like it's like what is it, judo or what's the slow one? Uh, and that's not oh, what's what's this one? It's uh, I was watching an anime show and they were talking about it. Yeah, uh, you know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, what, yeah. What was that? Did Guys, you see it? Why are you letting them get shots on me? That's what I'm. That's what I'm imagining. He's saying to the defenders, "Why are you allowing them to shoot on me?" Yeah, like a whiny baby. Oh, it's it's a form of uh, Chinese kung fu or Chinese martial arts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the name of it though. Yeah. Why are you swinging your arm at a ball like that? Like, just put your hands there. England and goalkeeper. If you want to punch it, like I get punching it, but he's not even punching it. He's hitting it with like his elbow. He looks, like like he looks so unathletic. Am I am I'm I wrong? Sorry. Am I wrong though? Like he's hitting it with his elbow crease. Like he just kind of like hope it hits him. I don't know. Like I get doing like, that on like a, a breakaway, and you're just kind of trying to make yourself big, and you just swing the arm like a glove save in hockey, but not when it's coming across the box and you can time it. You know what it looked like, Nick. You know when Mark Andre Fleury <laughs> tried to got crossover when he went to pick up the puck from the other yeah. end? It kind of kind of looked like that. It does, yeah. Except he didn't get scored on. No, man, this game's getting scrappy. I love it. It's <laughs> a <As> defender. <laughs> you yeah. love when it gets scrappy. <laughs> One minute of extra time in this first half of overtime. If you followed that, my word. Like Phillips is in every part of the the pitch. He's everywhere, he everywhere, everywhere the camera goes. He's he's there. Like he's he's covering so. Where much Where does now. he end up? When does where does he end up if Leeds end up selling him? I don't. I know, know I kept referring to Liverpool, but I mean, could City go get him? For example, I mean, like to replace Fernandinho long term. I know they have Rodri, but. Eh. I don't know if he fits into that mix though. Well, he can do all the legwork. He doesn't have to worry about scoring. That's true. And I mean, that's kind of what we see here. He's doing more of pretty much all the, you know, legwork, the, the less dirty rewarded work. He'd work. be a nice yeah. fit in uh, United's squad. He would be. That would have been he my next be. question. He would yeah. be. But I think he'd be valuable to any any club. So if you bring him in... Uh, I'm not saying do you... don't, don't. Just hear me out. Hypothetically. If you bring him to United, hypothetically, yeah. do you, does that allow Pogba more attacking freedoms oh absolutely but if i'm bringing if i'm bringing him into the squad i'm moving pogba yeah because pogba i mean doesn't he was probably <sighs> one of the better players in the tournament up until i agree internationally yeah. he's but fantastic he, but look at who he's with he's with conte okay so can, can, Phil, can, can phillips replace the conte and let him do what he has to do doesn't matter i think so doesn't matter he he's... does not play club soccer pogba does not get up for club soccer like he does for international he plays fantastic for his country because he's committed and he wants to be there he doesn't have the same drive anymore to play club and that's what's going to cost him why do you think that is? Is that just like a mental absolutely checkout? Absolutely. Is it because he's also not happy at United? And what was what was the reason at Juve? He was fine at Juve. No, but he his last year he struggled. Yeah, because he didn't want to be there anymore. His first year at United, he struggled, and he That's forced the he... move back. Yeah, he just doesn't play club soccer if... anymore. But if you're not happy in your environment, you're not going to play well regardless. Absolutely. If you're, you're the fittest you've ever been in your life. You're not going to play well. So if if is the problem he's not motivated in club soccer in general or he's just not motivated at those two clubs? Like what if he goes to 
the club of his dreams, the coach of his dreams, do you think he's going to play well? Or do you think he's just like for a year soccer? and then he'll see him get distracted? And get I think distracted. honestly, it's, this is a guy who lives and breathes by the international game. Like he wants to pull on that French kit. Whereas he doesn't have that same drive when it comes to a club, a club team. Which so. I get that. But my thing is like, as a player, the only way to the national team is to play well at your club team. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So why, why are it's, you not He's like, on his talent. It's on right. his talent. I think. Well, and I think it's on his reputation too. Like he gets pulled into the national team based on, yeah, you're, you're Pogba, you know? Yeah. And he has, Mbappe, like, I'm not trying to say he doesn't have the ability to play. Like this guy is incredibly talented. I just don't think he has the same drive for club that he does for country. I think he has the mm-hmm. ability to there he can turn it on. Every once in a while he turns it on for United, right? And then there, there's those games where he gets like eight shots, he makes three uh key passes, he gets two shots on target and one's a goal, right? Like those matches you can tell like he woke up and he's like I want to play today. Mm. But then the very next match he's like, yeah, I don't want to be here. <laughs> he just he stands around he's not getting stuck in he's not making any good passes right. he's trying to dribble by that? himself so well, why is that the case like i think i think you're, you're also asking the same question but you play play one brilliant game and you're like man this guy is one of the best players in the world and then you don't see him for three games yeah and and will is saying the same thing he said he's insane at both clubs but at man you later on he stopped really trying and i agree like i think he's he doesn't have the drive anymore and it that's what's going to cost him, I think, in his next contract. But then that's when a coach or a club needs to realize, like, this player isn't working for us. They need to go find something that's working for yeah, them. Right. You know, I, agree that. I think back. that's, that's what when I you think. get out of your environment. And I think that they need to move on from him. I think I need to bring in a center defensive mid to, to bring in that role and move on from him because I just don't think he's set at playing for United. And I hate saying that because I think he's an incredible talent, but I just don't think it's working. So you use that money because you can still get a pretty nice chunk of change for Paul Pogba right now. You use that money to get a top-end center defensive mid, and either you move McTominay as well or you move McTominay to the bench, Mm -hmm. and then you let whoever the defensive mid play with Fred because I think Fred and Fernandez play well together. Yes. As we saw a lot this year, they played a lot together, and I thought they played really well together. So. I would rather move Pogba, bring in a top defensive mid like an Ndidi or a uh, Phillips or somebody like that to control that midfield and allow Fred a little bit more offensive ability so that he's not playing side right. by side with Pogba and he has to be the defensive guy. Mm-hmm. And I think it takes off that pressure that you know Harry Maguire faces a lot or yeah, Lindelof exactly. faces a lot. And right I like in- McTominay, but I don't think he's a true center defensive mid. Just yet. Where was Phillips before went before Leeds? Wasn't he with the Leeds Academy? Oh, did he come from the Academy? I think so, but I could also be Sheffield. I will look it up for you. You guys keep going. Oh, okay. Um he's yeah, he's a Leeds Academy graduate. Sorry, I had it up, Nick. Okay. Yeah. Um I like him. But. I like him too. I think he's and I think he's really proven himself this tournament. I know I know I kind of said too. it before, but uh. He's a, oh, he's a Leeds boy then. He's so not leaving he, Leeds. Are you kidding not, me? No, no. He's not going to United. No. <laughs> he's not going not. to United. He might go to <laughs> anyone else. Yeah, he's definitely not at United. That's for sure. No. That rivalry. That uh, Will, work. it's it's hard to say whether or not Phillips would have the chemistry coming in right away, but that's hard to say. Any defensive mid that you bring in would have the chemistry coming in right away. So you're looking for a top-end defensive mid to come into that lineup and i don't know what why are we talking man united when there's a euro cup final <laughs> on, but you know it's fine how <laughs> dedicated we are um yeah they were just looking they need a top end defensive mid and they just don't have that yeah. right now anyways back to this <laughs> doing a little bit of our preview show aren't we just a little oh, that's cool it's cool pickford can't catch a ball either apparently oh god pickford i can't look pickford and he worries. So, you think you, he's he's wait, not question. tall enough to be you a think, good PK goalie? Well, who do you bring on? I mean, if Henderson was there, yeah, Henderson Henderson would be the number one person off the bench if they were going to PKs. <laughs> yeah, not a striker, not anybody like that. You want Henderson on the field? 
If this goes to PKs, I think Italy wins. Yep. Mostly I just concur. because of Donnarumma. I concur. Oh, here's Walker with a with a long throw. I mean, Paige probably already saw yeah, it. Yeah, Paige didn't react, so I'm going to guess it didn't go in the net. <laughs> it's a good throw, though. Damn. It's a great throw. They just didn't do anything with it. Three whiffs and the ball's out. Good punch. What do we make of, um, make of make uh, of Saka so far? He's one of the substitutes. Has he has he's he played running. well? Yeah, he's been running. <laughs> I can't got, really got say taken. if he's done anything else, but he's been running. Got, got taken down heavy. Yeah. A lot of set pieces now. It's either going to be a win on a set piece or it's going to pens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, somebody uh, in our chat said run of play on a counter. I mean, considering that no one's really done anything off a set piece. There's just been so many. Like, it's getting really chippy, you know, and it's set piece after set piece after. And they're just, like, even there, Pickford's just launching the ball into the box, you know? Yeah. Do you think the player of the game comes down to who wins the game for either team? Yeah, it could be one of those. It could be one of those. Because there's nobody's really like a standout right now. So for me, I, you know, you score the game winning goal, you, you're the player of the game. It's like if, game. If, if Benucci makes a block at one end and then right after it's a goal, I'd say, you know, Benucci would probably take it then. For sure. Yeah. But like none of the none of the attacking players for Italy have been on the whole game, so I don't know how you could maybe give it to them. Maybe, and that's why I think uh, when Nick was sort of talking about um, Jorginho potentially getting man of the match because he's been on the whole game and he's he hasn't done anything wrong, at least and quietly. That's the, yeah. He hasn't done anything amazing, but he hasn't done anything wrong either. So, or you know, costly. Someone tweeted, wrong. I'm not going to say who. An Englishman broke my heart. I need them to lose. So, hmm, I have an idea. Like that. <laughs> yeah, we know who it is. So, we're just, uh, we're not going to say her name. Just, I know who that is. Yep. For the fans, for the viewers, for the viewers. Pizza, pasta, pepperoni. <laughs> Here we go. Got a game on your hands. Interesting. Someone by the name of Lisa Evans. Oh, Arsenal player Lisa Evans. My apologies. I was like, who's this? Add a boy earphone. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the name Lisa. I was, I was like, oh, big time player, you know. <laughs> I got caught with the pizza, pepperoni. He got distracted pizza by food. Pasta. Sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> I'm a little hungry. Oh, oh and then yeah, another here. Oh, this whole time. And then here's another tweet. Um, again, not going to say these names because they're friends of mine. But um, uh, Harry Kane looks like the accountant at the firm who used to be unpopular in childhood, but then one day had one hell of a glow up in uni. He's a Neville Longbottom of English football. <laughs> Neville Longbottom, we love you. Do I know that one as well, Irfan? Or? Uh, no, no. Okay, no, just check this one. Oh, this one. Both verified people that I've <laughs> tweeted here, but <laughs> um, less than ten left. Here Who's Southie taking Gilling. it? Who's taking it, Irfan? England. No, I think it's England's England. looked more dangerous the last five minutes. I will say that mm. it almost looks like Italy has accepted the fact that Donnarumma Getting is tired. Uh, no, it almost looks like... It doesn't look like they're tired. It just looks like they've accepted the fact that Donnarumma's going to win it for them in PK. So they're like, ah, let's just get there. <laughs> they're just sitting so far back. <laughs> uh, interesting. Uh-oh. We got a big incident here. Uh, okay, well, interesting quickly. stat before we catch up to that. Uh, England has had four total shots in regulation. All were defenders. Sorry, Nick. It's all good. Um... I'm not at the the big issue here, so we'll ask a quick question. Favorite pizza, guys, before we get to it. Like favorite pizza place or pizza top? Top. Uh, I counter this with, does pizza, uh, does pineapple go on pizza? 
No. No. Well. No. Guys, I'm alone. Okay, the best. <laughs> okay, well, I'm at the injury now, though, so. Grealish got stepped on. They made it more dramatic than it is. Both players? Sorry, he got a stud on the leg. Correct? I haven't seen the replay yet. But I think so. It looks like he got a stud on the leg, and the other guy probably rolled his ankle doing the stud on the leg. Yeah, studs Keely. right on the shin. Ooh. Right, but it's it was going in for a 50-50. Both guys were sliding. Oh, it's uh, Jorginho. Jorginho and Henderson. Yeah, the guy, the no. Jorginho got the ball, and then his foot slipped off the ball into oh. into Grealish's thigh, and Grealish flopped around. Listen, like we've fish. seen, we've seen studs up. We've seen studs and people get bigger cards. Stop. Studs up is always a. Okay, focus on it's your treatment. It's supposed buddy. to always be a card. Yeah, it's, it probably will be a yellow card. I haven't seen anything yet. It was a card in his hand. Yeah. He got the ball, and then, like, to be fair, Jorginho got the ball. It just mm-hmm. the ball rolled his foot onto. The follow through, though. I know, and that's what I mean, right? So I'm saying it's a yellow card. But my dad asked me, is it a red? I'm like, no. Like, he got the ball first, and then the follow through off of the ball pushed his foot onto Henderson. So, yeah, it's a yellow because it's studs. It's like a studs down, but it's not a studs up. Yeah, it's not I mean, studs it's not up even either. Like, yeah. I wouldn't. It might be a yellow card, and they haven't announced it yet, but I'm we're all thinking that it will probably be a yellow card here, right? It was nothing. It was nothing. There you go. Whew. That's going to leave a mark. Sorry, guys. My internet's a little slow here. Perfect. You'll you'll catch up with us now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but wait, I was going to tell you the best pizza. Mm. Yes, your best pizza. Okay. The I preface. I lived in Italy for about a year. My favorite pizza was. It sounds a little strange. Pistachio stracciatella pizza. Uh, what's on it aside from pistachio? Stracciatella, duh. There's, I don't uh, know. Is that, is, that, is that a type of cheese? Oh, Sorry, guys. Kidding. It's a cheese. Oh. It's a cheese. Okay. It is? Cheese. Oh, there you go. I no, was it kidding. is stracciatella, yeah. <laughs> I was kidding. It's also a gelato flavor, which is weird because it's like- It is. Okay. Yeah, the gelato flavor is like chocolate and vanilla, but yeah. um, it's like a white sauce versus okay. like a red sauce. Mm-hmm. And then it's um, uh, prosciutto, stracciatella, okay. and pistachios. It is the- best pizza i've ever had in my life it's like crunch salt and some some cheese yeah that you go oh interesting oh, interesting okay it is i and i the first time i was like what the best pizza i've ever had yeah you also had it in italy where true or i think <laughs> if you did this here in in canada or north america they'd be like oh. it's like the once in a lifetime limited edition and then you never see it again yeah, yeah. right <laughs> Pizza Hut tries it and then they they never go back. Pizza Hut just adds grease to it and then makes it seem like it worked. <laughs> uh, sorry, Pizza Hut. Uh, Nick, what about you? Pizza. If you want to sponsor us, we'll take all that back. <laughs> I promise. I will promise your five dollar, five dollar, five dollar, five dollar pizzas. Uh, I did an extra five dollar in there. Sorry. I'm just gonna sit quietly here now and watch <laughs> you guys do your thing. Um... We do this a lot. Of, uh, I'm uh, aware. <laughs> I am aware of that fact. Uh, you think I don't listen to the shows? Even no, I do. I do. <laughs> I know everything that happens, Mister Stones to United. Yeah. Thought. He thought I didn't <laughs> listen to that one. No, I, I believe. Nick, what's you your did. favorite pizza? What's your favorite pizza? Depends on the day. Um, like yesterday, we had pizza, and I just ordered just cheese. You see, just mm. I just wanted to rock just a cheese pizza. Um, but I love a really, really good barbecue chicken pizza. 
So you get bar- barbecue sauce as opposed to tomato sauce on the pizza. Mm. Uh, barbecue chicken slices on top. Uh, mm. You throw veggies like green peppers, uh, mushrooms. Nick, what? When you come to Ottawa, yes. I'm going to take you to a place called Pizza Lovers, and they Been do there. the exact same. You have? Yes. It's you good. forget okay. how many times I went to Ottawa growing up for tournaments. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Days were late. But, I mean, when you come up, that's what we'll do. Now that I know you like that. Yeah. No, I, lo- I love a good barbecue chicken pizza. And you can top it. You, you can change the toppings every time, right? So sometimes you can just get the chicken. Sometimes you get chicken, green peppers, mushrooms, all these veggies. Sometimes you throw bacon on it too. Oh, just fantastic. Are it's a versatile really pizza. Going out. Trying it's a to make us hungry. Pizza. I'm always hungry though. That's not new. Oh, Will with the uh, egg in the middle of the pizza. I've seen that, Will. Um, what what other toppings go with it, man? Friday. I've seen Friday. it. Um, Friday. yeah, fried egg. I've seen it with like like some sort of ham or something. Yeah, and then yeah. veggies. Like yeah, the, the, like, I green. saw it with the almost arugula. omelet, almost omelet like. Yeah. Yeah, with arugula on the top. Yeah, yeah. arugula. Yep, I've seen that too. I saw, okay, since we're on food, I saw a really mean arugula watermelon homemade vinaigrette uh, salad with like nuts, like walnuts and stuff on it. Um, let me see if I can find the recipe. It was on, it was on um, Drew Barrymore's morning show or afternoon show or something. Cause that sounds fantastic. I saw, I'm a, oh, wait, I'm a are you that bored or fun? Here, You're watching Drew well, Barrymore's show in the afternoon. <laughs> I was flipping channels and it magically was on global and guys, I'm a middle aged mom. What? Rashford's coming on and, and Sancho. Sancho. The United pair. A little late, but sorry. Can I say super that? Super late. Yeah, it's what? done. It, it, hasn't it been official? I know. I'm just saying. Oh. So. Oh, Hendo. Eight, Hendo's coming off. Wow. South Keaton taking off players he brings in. Hendo and Walker. Why would you take Henderson off? You just put him on. Who, hold on. Who Henderson missed his penalty the last right time back. out. Oh, it's the 120th. Never mind. I forgot what so, time it was. He he just made these subs strictly for penalties. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz uh Hendo struggled on at the spot and then Walker doesn't really take kicks. I was going to say okay, well, Walker, question, though. Walker's got a good kick though. I would have taken Stones or Maguire off. Facts. But question <laughs> And these, put Anderson in the center back. Yeah, yeah. But these the two subs, you know, Rashford and Sancho come in for one minute. They don't touch the ball. Then you trust them to take a penalty. Yes. Cold. Yes. Cold. Yes. I guess it's the mentality. I think it's how yeah. can you deal with that pressure? Unless Italy scores on <laughs> on the, right after. But well, Paige Paige is ahead, so I'm going to assume that they did not score. <laughs> She's asking these questions. It's not. There's three minutes left in extra time. It's not done yet. Here. It's two minutes. Two minutes of what? Extra time? I have yeah. three minutes. I have plus two. Irfan, what plus do you three. have? <laughs> plus two. I also have the TSN feed, so. This one says plus three. Oh, Wait, maybe because of the last. Maybe they, they took the last substitution in. Yeah, but they don't for? show that. No. Uh, maybe broadcasting did it. Oh, no. And then they changed it to plus three at the bottom. Yeah. Oh. And change now on they the top changed two. it at the top now. So it was plus two originally, and now it's plus three. <laughs> no. That is Gosh. the oddest thing I've ever seen. I've no, I don't think I've seen that. Glitch. I've seen them mess up the score like one time, not in the Euros, in in other <laughs> games, but yeah. Like so, I, my sister and I were watching a game, and it was like two. It was like one one, but it was actually two zero for the for whatever team. And we're like, wait, but we thought. That's yeah. whatever team scored. <laughs> yeah. That's not right. So, Will, we want to know where are you joining us from today? He says, he says he's watching on BBC. So, maybe he's <laughs> yeah. in the UK. Nerves are probably really ready. high if he's in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My friend, uh, my friend lives in Liverpool and she called me yesterday and asked her if she's going, you know, somewhere to watch the game. And she said that you had to buy tickets to get into bars or restaurants to watch the game. And they all sold out like instantly. Like you have to do guest list, but pay for your guest list. Oh, he's from Ireland. 
Yeah, you have oh. to buy a ticket. Well, thank the you, Irish thank you for joining us in, from, from Ireland. Ireland. Nice to, nice. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And we got an expat We're in going to Egypt Pads, also boys. in the in the chat. So welcome as well. Uh, I am going to absolutely mess this up, but I believe it's uh, Carotid Spirit is the name. Welcome to the chat. Um, lots going on here. Just realized Rashford's playing right back, by the way. Hmm. He's uh, trying something different. And if it works, then Aaron Basaka will not play right back for. Also, for that's how they're getting around having too many people. Yes. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to put Rashford as a right Just back. Overload it with him and Sancho going, taking turns going up. Imagine. That would be awful. Here we go, pens. So, Paige, we're going to leave this up to you, okay? To uh, fill everybody in on how the pens go. No pressure. Yeah, All right. Oh, I'll keep you up to. I was like, wait, you want me to guess the five shooters? Or? No, you knew what I meant. <laughs> no, I get it. I'm I thought you knew time. what I meant. I I'm ahead of time. <laughs> no, I got you. I'm ahead of time. I'll just go like. <sighs> no pressure. Face. Um. Is it going to pass? George keeps predicting things correctly in the form of a question, and <laughs> it's getting it's getting crazy, man. That's because everyone was saying it's coming home. So, <laughs> well, no, even from the start of the tournament, he'll pose this question. You go, I didn't think about that, and I don't think it's going to happen, and then it happens, like the England and Italy situation, and then also like, um, I think he said something about Portugal or, or something like that, and then. And you're like, how are you right about this? And and but he does he does it nonchalantly in a question. So you think you're playing Jeopardy or something? And... He's and smart. He's a smart guy. Let's help stop predicting things. George, predict where I'm gonna end up in the future, please. <laughs> George, will I ever just play signed. for United? You're good. You don't need to figure out where you're going in the future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're right. No, I'm very happy with my new club. So, Bordeaux. You guys want a Bordeaux, Bordeaux. podcast called Touchline Thoughts powered by Garage Door Sports Network? Let us know. We have a player on your <laughs> team that's, uh, that's a part of it. The The media department's actually really cool in, uh, for the, the club. They're um, they do a lot of cool things and yeah. some nice people in there. I'll let them know. I'll go down there and let them know. <laughs> oh, I'll let them know. <laughs> that's, that's how I see Paige doing. Just, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> 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 He's got to start betting. Uh, that's what he responded with. <laughs> we'll get George to listen to some betting house episodes. Yeah, Gail, oh, George asks, uh, what is it? Was it a red? Nope. Already said that. No. No, I just I don't think he's watching us. <laughs> no. Tell him to watch and then he'll know. <laughs> yeah, for me, not a red. No, it wasn't a red. I thought it might be a yellow. Um, just because it studs on on body, but didn't end up getting anything, so he had a re the ref did have a yellow card in his hand, but it doesn't look like it um like oh, it oh no, he did get a us. yellow. He did get a yellow. Yeah, he did. So there was it was in his hand. It didn't know if he did it. Yeah. Commentators are saying, oh no, I muted them. Mine are all in French. I'm not listening. Je ne parle pas beaucoup de français, mais je comprends. So. Looks like Harry's taking the first one. Je ne comprends pas. You probably speak more French than I do. Who? Who, me or him? Both of you. <laughs> Him's that way, I should say. <laughs> I'm on the wrong side of the screen. <laughs> yeah, me or him? Him? <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> Just, I sound like I speak French. The little French that I know how to speak, I sound like I speak French. Oh, you have a good accent? Yeah. Nick was in all my French classes. Je ne parle pas beaucoup de français, mais je comprends. Your R is pretty good. The R is oui. the hardest because the thing is, Irfan's really up. good with we. He's really good at saying we. What? 
I sound like a duck. It's the it's the Gatineau. It's the Gatineau Quebec. Uh, Quebec it's the angry thing. Gatineau kids. Yeah. And then when you listen right, to Paige, like the, where are we at? Hold on. I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything yet. Nope, nothing's going on. They're okay. they're just picking sides and okay, giving lineups, and that's it. Goalkeepers are walking over to the goal. The ref's explaining, one foot on the line. Blah blah blah. We, we got a, a tweet from Luke Sewell, a good friend of the show. <laughs> I hate this sport. <laughs> <laughs> we do too. That's why we're here. Oh, boy. Hey, he's honest. <laughs> For the pens. Oh, man. No pressure, eh? Are you stressed? No, no, I'm not really. No, I'm not taking <laughs> really it. Oh, good. Uh, yes, I have the Union Jack behind me, and I'm wearing an England <laughs> kit, but I really don't care who wins. There's I a tweet. I... Wait, I got to read this tweet. It says, an England match at a major tournament going to penalties? Question mark. These TV script writers are getting lazier. <laughs> <laughs> They've been uh, stressed over the last year trying to do COVID stuff. So Yeah. Yeah. No choice. Just go back to the story that works just for England. Repeat. All right. Italy takes the first pen. Is it Baradi? Insigne. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Insigne, didn't he come off? Oh, yeah, he did. It's 11. Who's 11? Baradi. Baradi. Oh. Okay. Then it's Baradi. He's got a hell of a left foot. He scored? He did. Did pick for guess right at least? No. Paper doesn't guess right. Oh, I'm nervous. I was more nervous for the United V Real final mm-hmm. than this one. Oh, what the 25 penalties they took? I believe it yeah, everyone took everyone took a everyone took a penalty. Okay, Harry so Kane yeah. takes the second. Oh. And and it's good. Good. Donnarumma guessed correctly, though. Yeah, of course. So it wasn't one of his like his penalty against Denmark where it looked like he scuffed it, or just didn't know what he was mm-hmm. doing with it. No, he hit it well. That's good. The scoreboard is being up. updated as we can, folks. Uh, with the with the kicks, little green checks are going up. Yes. That's why Paige has to keep me updated. Oh, that was a good you. penalty, eh? Yeah. Good kick. Much better. Pickford, save. What? Yeah. That's that's wrong. You're lying to me. No, I'm I'm ser- I'm not joking. Pickford saved it. We need the the anime I face don't where it believe just drops. You. Southgate is like stoic. He's just like that guy doesn't smile usually. Oh, though, it's Bellotti. So. Wasn't a great kick. Decent save. How many? How many? So his right or his left? Uh, Pickford's left. Wow. Oh, the side. So the side that they're <clears throat> they've been aiming on game. Yep. Azra, I can tell he you. Cheated what that way too. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Kane or uh, Maguire's up next. What? Maguire puts it in the net. I'm sorry. Who? Maguire. What the hell? The is other he, Harry. What the hell is he doing taking kicks? I mean, he, he scored, scored, so I can't say anything. But like, he scored a nice one too. Top corner, left side. You just right put the, you just put all the these guys on to take kicks. And now you put Harry Maguire as a second kick taker. Why aren't uh, Italy? My dad just to... texted me a defender two question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Irfan, what were you going to ask? I said Italy should hit high, like like a high hit, because I think Pickford actually, give him credit he's for this, short. he's really good down low. It's because he's short. Sure. Yeah. His center of gravity is different. That is a good, that is a good is kick he? for Maguire. Ooh, Pickford <laughs> almost had that one. Italy goal. Pickford guessed right. Oh, that almost looked like it was going over the net. That that Maguire shot. 
No, that's a he good kick. He hit it hard, though. It was a good that's kick, kick, kick. It was a good kick. But it... Don't expect that from a defender. We Red got page. Rashford. Yeah, Rashi. don't expect that from me. <laughs> Rashi. Bonucci. We already know he scores. I'm worried about Rashi now. Rashi. Got Rashford's up. Oh, I thought Paige, you took a deep breath to say he doesn't score. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh. He's taking too long. I can't hold my breath. Oh. <laughs> I hope nobody does this weird. Oh my God. Freaking Rashford. That would be a miss. I'm guessing. <laughs> he missed and he looks stupid. You should watch his run up. Oh, did he pull a Pogba? He did something really stupid. Did he do a Jorginho? He did a Rashford, and he missed the net. <laughs> he did a Rash We're just calling it a Rashford. That's all. It is. Yeah. <laughs> he hit the post by what Will is saying. Is that true? He did. He hit the post. Dead straight run up. There was um. No. There was a like my dad yelling downstairs. He's doing a tee off. Uh, the you know the thing they teach you as a young skater. Oh, not anymore. Oh, he did the Pogba thing. Goof. Yeah, he looks ridiculous. It's okay. So, uh, Italy I watch, goal. I was watching uh, Guatemala and Guadeloupe as they were, they were trying to figure out the spots for uh, the Gold Cup, and there was a player did the exact same thing, sent the keeper the wrong way, and then just missed the net. So hey, it happens. It happens at all levels. Okay, but here's the thing: what's with the slow run up there? Like he does, he does his normal run up. He gets there, and then he slows himself down. All you're doing he, at that point is he, risking more because you're changing what your speed is. Well, because he's practicing with Pogba. I know, but Pogba does it from the beginning, though. I'm saying Rashford starts off running in and then slows himself down. That changes the speed. That changes so much in your run up. Bernadeschi down the middle. Sancho uh, save Donnarumma. Oh. Jorginho is the fifth taker for Italy, is he is not? This... So the guys, two guys that you two, brought... The two cold players. Yep. That's just a... Uh, that's not a good thing. I can hear my dad yelling downstairs. This is fantastic. My door is shut and I can hear him yelling downstairs. And I just heard my mom say, Oh, God, no. <laughs> Ezra, <laughs> miss... Yeah. So he did that. St he did that stupid delay run up too. If you're all on a soul Wait, shire, so if they score this, they win. It's over. Yeah. Is it Jorginho, by the way? And he's usually the fifth taker. Um, I didn't. See oh, he play. like read the. Look at the ba look at um Sancho's back foot on that shot. It was too easy. Paige, what are we at here? Pickford save. Wow. On Jorginho? Yes. Uh, yes. Does he do his dumb little skip? Oh, yeah, that was so annoying. Pickford Ooh. knew. Pickford just gets it to the post. Wow. Two misses from I'm each team. I'm stressed. Deep breaths here, Paige. You can do this. I believe in you. <laughs> Break the news softly. <laughs> yeah, let me. Oh, that's a bad kick from uh, Jorginho. He, he, uh, he muffed it. I'm going to guess that's a miss. No, it was a save. Donnarumma. So, man of the match, Donnarumma? <laughs> Probably. Yep, I think so. <laughs> Will got it right. So, who feels deflated right now? <laughs> let me let me watch the last kick, and then I'll feel deflated. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh, he's crying. Why would oh, they put God. the youngest player to take the fifth kick? Whose bright idea know. was that? Garrett Southgate. Dude. Whose bright idea was that? 
I love Saka, but that is not the way to go in a shootout. If he's going to take one, he takes one of the first three. I do not care. You do not let the youngest player oh, on the team that's take That's heartbreaking the kick. for him, though. Why isn't Sterling taking a kick? You kept him on. Because he's he's awful at kicks. That's why. Yeah, but <laughs> at that. I don't think you should be crying, buddy. The two guys that should have scored that were brought in to score didn't do a good job. Yeah. Credit to Pickford. I yeah, didn't and think then he it would be that good in the, in the shooting. Down to your fifth player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't come down to the fifth player. You're right. But give credit to Pickford. I did not think he would be that good in the shootout. He gets oh, right on well. four of the Bonucci, five shots. It's coming to Rome. Yeah, that's what Will said too. <laughs> yeah. It's coming Rome. <laughs> All right. Well, Coach Maria, I think you're happy now you're in the leaf on one a penalty kick. <laughs> no, I was I'm I think sure Italy she's deserved be to win the match, tonight. Honestly. I think Italy deserved to win the match. I don't think England was the better squad today. Um from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I know I England got the early goal. Don't get me wrong. They they fully deserved that one. Shaw finished as he should. But after that, it was all Italy up until the last maybe 10 minutes of the match in extra time, maybe mm-hmm. 15. Here's a, here's a fun stat that I, I saw in ESPN earlier. I didn't want to say it because I might have jinxed it, but I was saying that um, So when Italy won the World Cup, they were down one nothing, and a yep. defender scored, and they won the penalty. Let's fast forward to 2021. They were down one nil, right? Benuji scored, and they went in penalties. A ah, little full circle there. Yeah. Um, man of the match. I want to do man of the match for each team. Okay, might as well since we have a little time to kill here before they hand out the trophy. If we're staying on for the whole time, of course. But Irfan, man of the match. England, man of the match. Italy. Let's start with you. England. I still think it's it's Calvin Phillips. Just covered okay. way too much ground. Just it's hard to say anyone else. And I think Donnarumma after the penalty kicks, um, reading three pretty well. I mean, they weren't great kicks from the England players, but being able to to look like you've covered. 75% of the net to begin with before the shot. Yeah. Full marks. Paige? I 100% agree. Those would be my two picks as well. Yeah, I agree with Donnarumma. I think Shaw has a fair shake to be man of the match for England just because of A, he got the goal, and B, he was involved in both ends of the, the play defensively and offensively uh, more than anybody else because, let's be honest, outside of those two players, didn't really notice anybody from England. Yeah. Other than Sterling falling all the time. (laughs) The wrong reasons. All right, boys. I think I got to tap out here. I got some fitness testing in the morning. And it's almost midnight. So, Well, there it is, folks. That is Paige Culver from Touchline Thoughts. Um, We'll see you. We'll we'll talk and uh, we'll come up with a new episode. But I think we're leaning towards the season two very soon. Um, So stay tuned for the season two uh so stay tuned for that um have a good night good luck with your testing tomorrow and um we'll catch you soon thanks guys enjoy the rest of the uh award presentations we'll just we'll just wrap up the whole thing we might as well have fun um oh let's do it yeah let's just wrap up the whole thing since she's here okay so let's do it one two three Thank you, everybody, for listening. This was our coverage of the 2020 Euros. Congratulations to Italy on winning in penalties. Um, Two really good squads. One has to win, one has to lose. But uh, thank you to our producer and production manager for this show, Nick McVicker. Please follow us on Twitter or Instagram at TouchlineTH. You can follow the network at Garage Door Sport, like we said earlier in the show. Uh, We got a betting show, hockey show, football uh, college basketball with off the mic and then us over here at soccer. Um, so yeah, give us a follow, give us a like or rating, let us know what you think. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please, please put that into the chat or tweet at us or Instagram us. Um, thank you to our, our listeners will, um, for staying active with the pizza questions. Will we, all we, over the all over the board. Loved it. Thank you. We we appreciate you. Uh thank you from myself or fun manji. Thank you from Paige and thank you from uh Nick. And we will all see you next match day. Cheers. <laughs>